Hello, everybody. Welcome to ESR Podcast, Season 2, Episode 12. Uh, my name is Iron. I'm one of the hosts. Uh, unfortunately, Etiquette is not feeling well today, so it's just I just have my fellow co-host, Jordan, here today. Hello, Hello Jordan. Hello. Feel bad soon, and our, <laughs> and our special guests this week are Tucker. Hello, everyone. And Halkery. Hi. Okay. We're going to just, I guess, jump right into our notable runs. There are a ton this week. A lot of really great uh, great PBs and uh, top-level runs. So the first one from the Gen 1 to 3, uh, I guess, category of games, we have uh, Grogir's catch em all run. Uh, what's this time here? It's a little bit blurry on my end, but it's a 132.07. I don't know too much about about this run, but it is looks like if he's compared to his PB, it's about a one minute improvement on PB. Uh, pretty much pretty solid run. I'm not sure if anything new happened um, routing wise, but uh, really solid run overall. He had a bad C phone in Route 11, but good everything else. Yeah. This yeah, is just a crazy category. <laughs> yeah, I think th th this is a category of, I'm pretty sure Etiquette's run. That's yes. Like just some very so. unfortunate timing on that end, but so it is an impressive run. Well, at least you know, it's a crazy run at the very least. Which is cool. And Gen One is just <laughs> yeah, Gen One is very special. Yeah. Going to this next run, Tucker. This should be all down to you, really, seeing as this is your run. Yeah. So this is my new world record for HGSS glitchless. Um, I got this record by like 47 seconds, which is kind of funny because I think uh, I think Worcester needed 47 seconds to beat Buster's run. <laughs> so it's funny how it's always 47. But yeah, I I basically started grinding this game like around Christmas in of last year. So it's about three months. Um, like about halfway in that grind, I was like not motivated to keep grinding this because early game is really brutal. It's basically like a gauntlet of really hard fights. So I did like some side categories. And then after that, I got like on this on this run where I really wasn't like playing too well, but I was a much ahead of record. Um, and I ended up like dying to the surge fight of all fights due to like double team spam. But yeah, after that point, I was like really motivated to grind. Um, and I basically used up all of my spring break to try to improve. And I didn't PB over spring break, but I did get this run on the Friday after spring break. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with it. It's a... Uh, I think it's really hard to beat for my standards. Um, so basically, it started out pretty well. I didn't drop Minip ever. And uh, the the only like real blemish on the run is like the the Whitney fight. Um, I actually forgot to repel before going to Chuck. So I got an encounter, and then that's how I realized. I almost made it all the way through without getting an encounter, which was pretty funny. And I actually hit a spinner in this run, shamefully. Um, <laughs> this is like the only record that has a spinner in uh, DSPSR now. But no. yeah, that guy only had um, one poke. It was the it was the the spinner before Lake of Rage, which. Um, it is actually really hard to pass because like there's no real consistent setup for it. The setup that I went for is like kind of scuffed where you have to like dismount your bike. But um, I like miss Minuta. Uh, it's like around a minute, like fifteen into the run, I think. We're trying to find it. A minute fifteen. Yeah. Mi oh no, no, sorry, an hour, hour 15. fifteen. All right. <laughs> uh. 
for the you can see like lake of rage and a little bit before that I have not played this game in a long time. Yeah, it's understandable. Maybe like a minute 17. A minute 17? Yeah. How much of the, like, you mentioned it was Worcester who had the previous record? Yeah, it was Worcester. Yeah. Um, like, how much of a, like, has there been any, like, changes in the route between then, which helped? Um, or, like, is it just you? Kind of played basically, better, or I don't know. Yeah, basically no changes. Um, I know that Worcester started like looking into trash can minip, um, which is like really convoluted actually because you don't do surge first in Kanto, so you have to like map out like seventeen hundred frames after the initial seed when you um, boot into the game after Lance. So I was like, bump that. I'm not doing that. I'm not <laughs> smart enough to do that. And um, it didn't end up mattering because I basically got all the time saves that you would get anyway. Basically, I got no encounter um, on the way to Sabrina. And I got first strike hands and like seven cans total. There's the spinner. I botched the setup and I tried to adjust for it, but I was... A tad bit late, so not proud about that one, but it's only one Pokemon, which is a significant improvement over um, the previous record, which had two spinners total and three Pokemon total. So basically my run world recorded because I didn't hit those uh, extra, that extra spinner on the Sabrina split. Yeah. I think that's but, what um, you need sometimes, I guess. Yeah, it, I mean, that and also for the run just not to die anywhere. True, yeah. <laughs> Where in this game, there's a lot of places, honestly. <laughs> Especially at the beginning and the end. But yeah, other, other than that, um, the run after hitting that spinner was very solid, I'd say. Um, I got a lucky fight on Jasmine. Um, so I basically like saved, or I didn't lose 20 seconds. Where you can easily lose 20 seconds if you don't like crit or get a spit f drop or a low roll where's jasmine around jasmine so. is at an hour 38. oh oh 38. yeah so my run actually got um i believe it's a spit f drop on steelix which um Cuts down the fight from four turns to two turns. So that saves 20 seconds. What's the chance to have that happen? Is it like a... a wall uh, wall the speed off drop is 10% from 10. Shadow Ball. Oh, all right. Yeah. You can also get like a crit or um, a 2 and 16 low roll, which also works. There's a lot of ways to do it, but it's not probable that you get that lucky fight. Um, my PB and world record both got lucky fights, so it's kind of like... It really puts the pressure on HGSS now to get a lucky Jasmine. Otherwise, you just like lose 20 seconds. It's pretty brutal. Um, yeah, um, I guess another bad part of the run was the Kimonos, uh, the Kimono Girls after Claire. Because yes. I... That looks like a Kimono. Or at least an Umbreon. <laughs> there we go. Sorry. Yeah, there you go. Right there. So basically, this Umbreon is really hard to kill because it's only a 1-8 range. Um, so I obviously missed that. And then it confuses you with Confuse Ray. I ended up hitting myself two times, um, which is pretty unlucky. And then the other Komodo that usually goes wrong is Jolteon because you don't Oko it. And uh, it Thunder Waved me. So... Oh lost time there luckily i didn't miss on the double teams afterwards but yeah this is um a significant time loss compared to world record world record actually had like this insane rival split which i was always like complaining about running against <laughs> um because it okos it okos the umbreon and okos the jolteon um that gets the one in eight range on umbreon and gets a crit on jolteon so it saves like 
a massive amount of time there. I actually lose like 32 seconds to record on this split despite not hitting a spinner. People always think that I hit a spinner, <laughs> but it's just that much better in Worcester's run. Got very lucky there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Other than Cans Manip, is there anything like big and groundbreaking that's being thought of to improve times? I know you mentioned you lost time to some fights and, and like there's probably some spinner in the spinner as well. Yeah, is there there's anything like, like, yeah. I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's not faster. It's like, just saying this this other route where you use um a raikou that has hidden power ground it has a lot of limitations oh. one of them being one of them being that it can't get pokerus and oh. like since so that, since oh. there's like a lot of um limitations for like what you can get in a seed in gen 4 like you can't get all of a good raikou a master ball pokerus and hidden power ground there's just no seed that satisfies that so the current route does um no hp ground and it gets thunderbolt by playing voltor flip for three minutes which is pretty hilarious it's like the best yeah that, that's the weird best idea ever. in speedrun imo but yeah, so no hidden um, power on the raikou then at all yeah no hidden power okay but basically what this route proves is that like if you get good fights that you know you'd normally use hp ground for there's like no there's no looking back for that old route. This route is just strictly better. That's fair. Yeah. Um, basically, those fights are uh, Jasmine and Surge. Where those are like, they become free. But my run gets good Jasmine and Surge. So it's, I'm really happy that I get to prove that Voltor Flip is indeed superior. Um, I guess I can talk about the Kanto as well, like the E4 was solid. There's not really much to say about that, but my I stringed together like three really good splits on Sabrina, Misty, and Erica. I almost golded all three. Um, if not for Erica having like a little strange movement. Do you all do the tunes differently? Where's it? <laughs> Oh, uh, they're they're the first three gyms in Kanto. All right, okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. A bit too far. There we go. I think. Don't mind all it. Golding, those splits wouldn't really be significant if it weren't for like me actually getting the perfect like Sabrina and Misty splits. Like I, I got the Blossom critical. Um, in the double to save a turn. Hmm. Um. And that I actually like didn't even notice until like the opponent sent out both Pidgeot and Parasect at the same time. I was like, what the heck? This is not normal. <laughs> and so I I didn't realize that I had crit Blossom. But yeah. Um uh, Oh, just, another funny thing. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say like head bolts put in shot, like just in the power ground, one hit KO yeah. the Celix. Yeah, HP ground clears Celix easily. So there's like no variance on that fight. Perfect. Yeah. Um another funny thing about this run is that um every like every time that you get a call, there's like a fifty percent chance that it's a bike shop call, and there's a fifty percent chance that it's about that's a that it's Elm calling about like, oh you have pokerus. You should uh you should talk to me about it. <laughs> so and I ended up not getting that 50% bike shop call until like the sixth coin flip out of eight in the run. So I got like, I was like, there's a serious chance that I was able to save 12 seconds for no reason in this run if I had just gotten like three more coin flips. But, um, has anyone had that happen? No, no, I, I think the furthest that it's gone is this run where oh, you get wow. on the sixth one, and that happens on like the Janine split. <laughs> So like you can go the entire game without getting it if you get like one and two, five six luck. Like on that level. I mean, you see plenty of people miss tackle in red, so. Yeah, I mean, it's not out of the picture. Yeah. But it hasn't gone that far. I actually had a PB before that got the same call, in the same place. So. 
Hey, I'm the closest. Whoever's next maybe will get the 12 seconds of free time save. Just get lucky. I wait for resets to happen because you get the phone call. <laughs> the bike shop, no. <laughs> Classic. Yeah, there's a there's like there's like a lot of memes about the bike shop, but it it kind of like ruins my ruins like comparison sort of because like there's no real run that gets time loss at Janine besides my run. Like my my Janine would have been a gold if I didn't get the bike shop there, which is kind of funny. But yeah, um, I guess for the rest of the run, I already said that Surge was a really good split first try cans and I only had one miss on Surge after double team and he didn't go for Thunder Wave after, which is kind of weird. So I didn't lose him out of that much time. Um, I went for the safety X back on Brock so that I didn't miss a range and lose 20 seconds. <laughs> It only cost it six seconds, so kind of took a safety strat there. Yeah, I mean, if you lost your how how far ahead were you by that point? Um, I think it was like about a minute on record. Yeah, like taking. Yeah, and a record second. also yeah, makes sense. <laughs> record also missed a range on there, so I was like, I'm gonna take this guaranteed time set. Yeah, definitely a smart call. Yeah, and it also missed Rock Slide too <laughs> oh. on that turn. So it was like a little extra not time loss. So that was cool. <laughs> yeah, um besides yeah. that, the the blue and red fights were pretty standard. Um I didn't have a god blue or a demigod blue like record did, but it only it's only about like 15 seconds time loss and there's not much you can do if you don't get demi card blue which is like you have to dodge um either leaf storm or hypnosis and it's only like one nate to pick either of those and um the red fight was good it's not spectacular it had like three heals um whereas my pb and record both had two heal red so I lost like 15 on both. Again, there's not much you can do. It's a it's a luck game at that point. <laughs> yeah, I assume you're just kind of more hoping that red doesn't kill the run. Doesn't the kill you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or like do something stupid like Blizzard, Freezer, Focus Blast, Adventure. Yeah. Yeah. One thing to note though is that um, after blue, I I was able to go for quick attack strats, which is basically. You're able to bait out a quick attack from Pikachu, and that makes the fight like um, a good a good amount de uh, safer. And what actually happened is that on turn one, Pikachu paralyzed me with Vol Tackle, which would just cost like another fifteen seconds if I didn't have quick attack quick attack strats going. But since I heal on the turn after to bait the quick attack, it didn't matter. So that was pretty clutch. I love quick attack strats. Cool, cool. Yeah, that's the yeah. run. That's the run. All right, then in that case, well, well, congrats on the world record. Thank you. And then go on to Skoa's Black White 2 Challenge Mode World Record, 313.59. You haven't run Challenge Mode, have you, Toka? No, but I know a decent amount of it just by watching. Right, I have right. not, I don't know, like, the intricacies, but I know a lot about this run after what Sko was talking about. Um, basically, it was like decent up to Elisa. He had a little bit of time loss on the drill bear catch because it didn't get in first ball and it used dig afterwards. But um, yeah, up to Elisa, it was like fine. It wasn't like a world breaker or a world beater. But um, actually, if you, if you go to Elisa death, and show off some of challenge modes uh well this death first so i feel like is, oh yeah 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 he he has like a multitude of deaths in this run uh one of them is this samurai on rival 2 where <laughs> you have to get you you have to get um reasonably lucky by not getting two um strong rolls from samurai's aqua jet and he ended up 
settling for the first roll and getting a high roll on the second one. So he dies here. It's also unlucky that he got taunt from Unpheasant so that he couldn't just one shot the Samurai. So yeah, it's easy we, you said uh, a lesser, then, a lesser. Yeah, Lisa. Lisa. It's, so there's always a pronunciation that I'll get wrong. Uh, I think there's uh, a bunch of different ways to say it. <laughs> Worcester says it like Eliza. I think that's funny. I don't even think it's close to Eliza. That's not the fight. Is it on like the actual fight, or is it just in? The yeah, the actual fight. Right, okay. Um, wanna look at when Amolga dies. So a lot of the problems in Challenge Road is actually setting up on Amolga because it has Aerial Ace. Um, you actually use the next event to like sort of remedy that. But yeah, he gets the setup fine. But once he kills the Amoga, he gets staticked. And what happens afterward yeah. is that a jolt it comes out and it has energy ball, it just kills you. <laughs> like you can't do anything about it, so you have to take the death. Um and that costed him a decent amount of time. Yeah, so heard, there's a static. But many people do not like this Amolga specifically. Yeah, it's it can haunt you even after it dies. It's quite brutal. Yeah, this Joltik here. Which is challenge mode only, because gym leaders have one extra Pokemon each. Just wrecks you. So yeah, he has to reset up again after reviving. Um, it's not too bad. Um, it's kind of how you have to deal with challenge mode. Because runs barely get past Lisa. Because <laughs> she's so difficult to beat. But yeah, um, he was able to at least win the fight. I mean, also, I guess, I, keep, I feel like I keep saying it, that is the most important thing, is just getting through the fights. Yeah, getting runs past point. Elisa. Yeah. Skoa actually had, like, a, a really good run. It was, like, a 108, high 108 Elisa. So, you, as you can see, against this run, it's, like, much better. He had mm. a very good run, but it died to... Um, Charles, which is the next, like, pillar of this run. How um, many pillars are there, I guess? Like, it sounds like there's a million of them. Yeah, there's... There's, um... Charon, and then Berg. And then Elisa. Charles is one. Clay is, I guess, one of them. Actually, not so much in Challenge Mode, I think. But yeah, it's, it's a lot at the... At the front of the game. Um... Some other things to note about this run is that he had basically a perfect clay. Um, he gets like a really good setup on Onyx and then um, gets a range on Sand Slash. Which is actually pretty cool compared to any percent because in challenge mode, clay has that extra Onyx and you get the setup on it. Whereas in uh, any percent, you don't get a chance to set up at all because Sandslash just uses Bulldoze on you. So you can't really afford to give it turns. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, it's like, a nice setup here. So is it, yeah, geez, is it just... Oh, I guess we can watch just like the one. Yeah, so you get a, a few home clauses and then chip it with Rock Slide to break sturdy. Okay. And then from here, he just gets um, no flinches from Rock Slide and then gets a range on Sand Slash. Yeah, so all of a sudden done. This is like, this run was decent up to here. Um, after Undell arrival, that's Emerald Death, um, he thought that the run was like dead, but yeah. it wasn't, it, it clearly wasn't that. But yeah. To, to see even more, um, I guess Tom Foolery, you have to go to the Marlin, the Marlin fight. Because he also has a death there. Uh, oh, oh th that was an absolute guess, but hey. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> yeah, so this is the perfect spot to highlight, because right here he misses on Mantang um, with the 90% rock slide. So this like just puts the fight in great jeopardy. And um, 
He goes for a range here on Jellicent. You can opt to go for Iron Head and hope for the flinch, but he goes for the Earthquake range. And um, he misses it. So he takes a death here. It's pretty common to get a death in Marlin, but not because you miss Rock Slide on Mantine. <laughs> it's just a really weird way to end up in that kind of situation. But yeah. You're just really hoping that you get good Marlin fights in White 2, in any category, really. And it just didn't go his way. Yeah, I do feel like with the podcast, anytime this is way too, I feel like I'm highlighting Marlon for yeah, it's, some embarrassing it's so reason. Like, it's really just the luck game, and then Marlon is just the pinnacle of that. Mm. Like, Marlon determines your pace. Um, yeah. It's still After that, yeah, it, yeah, yeah I mean, you might be, might be wondering, like, how this got record. <laughs> Right. I mean, I'm looking at this and thinking he's still a minute ahead at this point, which I guess still is. Yeah, but his his PB is not record. He's actually his PB was actually like a one and a half minutes behind record. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was a three fourteen twenty seven. Um. Basically, he gets a really clutch elite four. Um, one, I guess you should uh, go and highlight the Marshall fight around the uh, end. Was it? Nope, that's Caitlyn. <laughs> yeah, right there. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, this uh, is it. Caitlyn or Marshall? Marshall, right? Uh... So a little before this. Do the five seconds. There we go. There we go. No. Oh. Yeah, just do the one. Yeah. Okay. So Marshall is another fight where like you're relying on luck, and if you don't get lucky, you take a bunch of deaths. Because you can't give um, Throw or Conkelder any turns. Um, so basically, what he does here is he crits on a he crits on Throw with Iron Head, so that he doesn't have to die. Nice. Yeah. So that that alone is really good. But then you get to Conkelder, and he also gets the critical on Conkelder. <laughs> so it just sent this run into like a massive like. A massive um i guess reversal like that alone just puts him ahead of record for reasons <laughs> just reasons it's white too it's what this game is it's quite amazing what you can do seems like yeah i mean obviously like the elite force is gonna be a nightmare to run against for anyone yeah but, this like... is like the, the rest of the elite four was also really good um because on Caitlyn, he gets Hypnosis Dodge. And on Chantal, he gets uh, the Coffer Grigus range. So it's just like a really fantastic Elite Four. He doesn't get the flinch there, but that's like the only yeah, flinch the only insane. problem. Yeah. He also gets like Quick Claw from Bisharp on Grimsley, but it doesn't matter that much. But yeah. Um, it there was is... actually... Oh yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, but like from the sounds of it, like the earlier on, like with the death to Hugh on the drain split and then to Marlon. It does seem like there's still room for improvement overall in the run. Even if it might be difficult overall to get. Yeah. The uh, It was it was like I don't know if he no, I don't think he had like a anything like a shaking grass, but a lot of that is just down to um execution. And like again, all the fights are sort of luck dependent on whether like you get some flinches or not Sko in this run notably said like he didn't get any good flinches <laughs> but he did get a lot of crits and that that doesn't really matter if you just crit yeah so yeah it's pretty funny how this run got there um there's like a last bit to talk about in the iris fight the champion fight because there's an option to go for a three and eight range on High Dragon and skip using Sword Stance. But at his at his time, um he was like debating whether he should skip this or not. But he ends up going for this uh safe sword stance to secure the PB. He didn't know at the time that he was about to get a 313. He really wanted it, but he decided that you know he doesn't have the record. He's his PB is quite a ways off, so went for it. But in the end, he clutches out the sub 314 by one second, regardless of his safety play. Uh, I 
gosh, the you can just they skip the death credits. Okay, so it's yeah, like less than a second, just like the point three two. I mean, I don't know how it's exactly split. Could be closer to like three thirteen fifty nine flat, or it could even be like closer to like three fourteen. Just having those few frames. Yeah, it it cleared pretty well, but at the, it was just like really hard to see because like you can also get like a couple of seconds of time loss on like Haxorus later in the fight. So that that really made the difference there. Yeah, that's a. Uh, Skoa says that the run is like, it's good, but it's not like spectacular to run against. And he's still going for a PB now. He wants like a three twelve. Anyone's gonna do it? To be fair, that was one of them. Yeah. Oh, this also puts Skoa at the top of both white two and challenge mode. White two hundred percent and challenge mode, so he's the new white two champion. Which there's been like four of, I'm pretty sure. It's like crafted Worcester, Minnow, and Skoa now. All right. Nice, nice little tidbit there. Yeah. A lot of God oh, white yeah. two gamers among us. Yeah, but then that's not the only thing with uh, black white two though. Yeah, this more is, white too. <laughs> more white too. Dexy with the any percent Japanese world record three seventeen thirty seven. Yeah. You know much about this run? I do. So this right. run came the day, no, the same day as Go is like literally hours apart. Like around here, on the on the drill beer is where Go like completed the run. But yeah, um, Dexy is Dexy goes for the Yolo ball. On Drill Bear, and I'm pretty sure he catches it. Right? Pretty sure? Pretty yeah, sure? Just yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, that makes it so that his run is pretty capable of getting record, and he actually builds up quite the lead. Um, and again, it's. You have to go into the Marlin fight <laughs> where he loses 50 seconds because he doesn't get a good fight there. Um, the exact opposite of Skoa. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is basically the same as Skoa, because they both get bad Marlins. Oh, I was thinking with regards to Skoa's, the one we just showed, but that was challenge mode anyway. Yeah. So, he gets um, Scald from Karakosta. He doesn't get a flincher, and he doesn't get um, Shell Smash. So, he has to take the death here doesn't get the flinch on Willard either to save a death so yeah he just straight up loses 50 seconds on that but um it puts it really close to getting a pb his pb is by the way at this point is one second one second behind world record because buster bopped him by one second Ooh. <laughs> to get world record yeah so all he basically needs is a pb so it's pretty easy to see that he um he just has a little bit better of a run, goes for the same risks that he took, and has a pretty excellent elite for as well. Um again on the on the Marshall fight for Dexy, he gets um not a crit on throw, but he gets the flinch, which is you know, it's it's still good. Still really good. Um I can't remember what happens on in Kilder. I said that he just died to Sock. So he doesn't get the flinch on Sock. Yeah, he gets the... Oh no, he actually got a crit. I'm sorry. I totally misremembered. Uh -huh. right, crit on the throw and then on the Conkle Dill. Yeah. He's like I also want to note that when Dexy crit on throw he said i'm sko go go <laughs> which is <laughs> extremely funny i like started dying laughing oh i got i wonder if i can actually sort that out quickly I yeah, yeah so no, she's going for a second yeah it takes a death on sock there so it's not the god elite for but yeah I mean, as as a joke, we kind of accuse anybody who gets good luck, marginally good luck on Marlin as, 
as cheaters. Yeah, I'm Skogo. Think, thank you, Dexy. Now go to bed. Um, yeah. So, as you can see here, he his lead is basically back up to a comfortable area. So, at yeah, there's not much else here. He has a good rest of the elite four, and then at um the Iris fight, he. He is like going to win unless he gets crit. Um or like crit burn. And then he actually like gets crit by High Dragon. So he has to like take an extra heal on Agron. But it wasn't enough to cost the record, he still clutched it. So yeah. That's the it run. should be. How oh, does it not have Dexy speaking on this? Oh, I don't think it has Dexy speaking on this pod. Yeah, no, nah, this one was, um... Uh, I don't uh, know how Dexy does it, but he, like, has a method to record his runs without audio, but also, like, stream it. His runs with, um, commentary at the same time. Uh, in OBS, you can, um, separate the audio channels to where, um, the recording will use one audio channel and your stream will use another one. And you just have the mic disabled on the recording audio channel, but keep it enabled on the streaming audio channel. I've got to learn how to do that because I'm no brain. Texas yeah. is clearly big brain. <laughs> when, when Valkyrie that, is recently. also big brain. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. I also told me. I think Ringo just. It might, it's maybe just a Japanese run. I think as well, primarily because the two Japanese runners I know, which is a very small sample size, admittedly. But like, I know Ringo does that as well yeah. for his vods. I don't think Buster does. Fair enough then. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, congrats to Dexy. Yeah, congrats to Dexy. Three seventeen. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, I guess one thing to note is that the time that he got is like equivalent to a three eleven high three eleven in English. Um. Which is like only there's like three runs better in the English, um, alternative to white two. So. Yeah. That just kind of shows how like grinded out it is in English compared to Japanese. Like Dexty doesn't really like to play white too. He thinks it's really boring and <laughs> it's really down to luck. But yeah, it just shows you how the competition is different there. Although we all know that Dexy is capable of much more. He's uh he's moving on to actually challenge mode. So yeah. I want to see Dexy on Switch. I want to see Dexy doing Switch runs personally, but... You'll only play Switch runs if you buy him a Switch, he said. <laughs> Alright, fair. <laughs> <laughs> I respect that. But, speaking of Switch runs, to be fair, uh, Wave with the... Let's go EV any percent second place was the world record at the time. Yep. A 30123 had Dawson skip. Um, and this is... It didn't set off the the trigger for considering having the categories split between any percent and any percent glitchless, I guess, at the moment, or is it any percent no mount skip? Is well, I think that like they're the only two names I can think of. I just find it ironic though that it does say any percent glitchless at the top of those splits. And it might be called I think yeah. this category <laughs> would not this run would not be in that category now. Yeah, there's like a number of trainers in Victory Road you can skip with Rapidash. Dawson's probably the most well known, and it's the one that's been done, and the only one that's been done in a run, I believe. I think it's been done three times now. Uh, Wave uh, was the second. The run that's coming up, we're gonna show next, is the third time it was done. No Green Lightning got it as well. Um, yeah, aspects aspects got it in the marathon. In the marathon, yeah, next as well. Not a piece. Yeah, I meant I sorry, but when I said that I meant a PB run. Oh right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah, that for... would have, that would have been that's a run as well. I think the marathon run. Usually for let's go marathon runs or are, are can be PB attempts because you usually don't load saves. Yeah. And it's pretty easy to get a runnable starter. It's, it is. It's every. It, I think it's gone for. It is every train in victory row that can be skipped. I know I was in like I was in a call with Joker when he found one of them. Which was 
absolutely hilarious because he was not paying attention at the time and then he just suddenly shouts in my ear. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, yeah, Joker's uh, found a fair few. There was someone like, was it someone who just came into the Switch Discord as well that found like the Joker? Yeah, I think? it was. And that's how I watched my. Like, Made a, a look at all of the things in Victory Road, seeing whether it was possible or not. But... Yeah, there's there's one that the Alexa, Alexa you can skip not using. Well, you skip it using <laughs> using Rapid Ash, but not the same way, because um, you run into the wall and then force the dismount and then sneak around her. But yeah, I'm sure you could skip her oh. using that same method. But why would you go for that if you could just do the much more consistent approach. Hmm. Yeah. I didn't even think I forgot about that chain completely, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like wave like from the Let's go is kind of like because I've I didn't get time to catch this run. Again I was hoping like well, I think I felt like I could probably would have known more about this. Was but... it was it even live? I know I've never seen Wave stream Let's go. He streams Gen 3. Because this wasn't long after he got the Emerald record. Yeah, Could have been an offline run? I'm not sure. And yeah, maybe. Oh, okay, I might have just missed it then. Wave does Let's Go in uh, VC exclusively. Oh, uh, okay, okay. That is fair. Are you there, Head Bob? <laughs> but either way, it does seem like a solid run again, like without. If I just skip here quickly, uh, 28. Uh, so he's actually kind of behind at this point. Because it's typically around 30 seconds, I think. Like, give or take, depending on like the wave for evolution uh, and stuff like that. But at this point, just seem behind. So, actually, maybe not the strongest run compared to PB as well, which was. Oh, it's like. A, a, what was the old one uh, for Eevee? It was a 30204, I think, right, from Etchy at this point. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. So, be kind of effectively a bit behind his own 303, probably around, well, over a minute behind, like a minute 20, minute 30. But, and then somehow at this point, it's, it must have been something in the middle because caught 41. Uh, I guess it's yeah, actually it's the plane split, probably, but still though. Yeah, it's getting Dorse to skip in the fact that, uh, like, I know Etchy's going for sub 3 in any situation, I think, but also he's going for the 3 0 flat with um, any percent glitchless. Call it that for now. Mm, yeah. Which, speaking of Etchy, <laughs> uh, also I think because you get the reaction there. <laughs> Um, yeah, just like the the first three o o, like a three. Big reaction. Yeah, three o uh, three zero fifty three. Uh, and that's this is now the current let's go, EV and some world record, and I guess let's go world record Overall, in general. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. his peak his peak of record is three o one o four. Now, what's notable is this run's not on the leaderboard, <laughs> as at currently. And yeah. I guess that that's because of the sort of decision that's going on right now regarding mount skips. Well, Waves so, is on. Waves is on. Yeah, I think Waves, Waves is, on. is. That cheese is not. Yeah. About the mount skips, um, the reason that you know it's such a big deal and Edgy was reacting that way is because it's really kind of luck dependent based on Rapid Ash's yep. animation, right? That's the theory. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if anyone actually specifically knows yet. Do they? The reasoning. We gotta yeah. ask. Though. Are the I, I, I'm, the I'm not in the let's go. <laughs> I'm not in the let's go section in the switch. I it got split up recently. Uh, so if there's been any yeah. more discussion, I I will have missed it. So. I'm not, I'm not super familiar, but if I discussed. yeah, I'm not super familiar. But if I recall correctly, people can sort of. There's a very very inconsistent setup for Dawson specifically. Like you just like bounce off the wall or something like that but it's not it's not like even close to being consistent enough to go for specifically i mean is that like why wawa and Echi were able to do it in their runs like did they go for that or were they just lucky 
uh, yeah, one. I think they both went for it. Because I mean, like, Edgy, I think at Edgy, this point, Edgy he did, was yeah. not liking this rune. I think it was behind pace. He was, yeah. yeah. So, okay. kind of, I think he was going for all of the victory road skips, and it just happened to be Dawson that he skipped on. Wave didn't try a setup. Wow. <laughs> just kind of, just kind of went, yeah. Yeah, she tried for another another skip prior to Dawson, if I recall correctly. Oh, I yeah. I find it funny that Waves on um, Elias split said any percent glitchless. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, whoops, this is just the best pivot in history now. Yeah. XT. <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see the ball split because it's what it's kind of difficult. Like, I mean, this is outside looking. You can't really go for at any percent run or in any percent literal run specifically it kind of seems like it's just going to end up being decided at the end you could like, like talk Mario to dawson right? zero and one star it's like yeah they go yeah for actually that's because if they get the <laughs> if they get the massive skip at zero star if they only get half of it it's one star yeah that's actually it's a really PLJ. good example of that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean congrats actually though with the any percent and you've said no mount skips. No, 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 it has had the mount skip, never mind. But actually, he does also, he will also have that world record like, back again with the yeah. 302, actually. Yeah, no, he, I wouldn't, don't think... he wouldn't have the Pikachu version of any percent, would he? But he'll have three of them, or like three of the let's go any percent world records, I think. Was Pika Run, I don't think, had a skip, did it? No, uh, no, but I'm just saying if it was split, so he'd have the Pika any percent glitchless, Eevee any percent glitchless, and Eevee any percent. So he'd have three of the any percent yeah, ones. Yeah, he'd had he'd have Pika by default, even though he yeah. doesn't do a glitch. Yeah, that's fair. I one thing to note is I think Wave only does runs like if he's in VC, he doesn't like do runs like on main, so. I think Etchy is a uh, the clear favorite contender for like sub three here. I think I see Wave playing much more um, in the future. Yeah, I think has Wave gone to yellow or going? Yeah, to Wave's to doing yellow. yellow now. Yellow, yeah. Actually, I've heard Etchy's considering going to yellow as well. To be fair, so yellow might be the new hot game coming up. Either that, or it's going to be Legends Arceus, which this is Shady's, uh, Shady Gamer's, uh, Shady Gamer X's Legends Arceus 80%, now second place from the 355.56. Elk? Yep, yep. Shady um, actually came with me from uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon as soon as Arceus came out. Uh, I'm not sure whether it was my streams that influenced him to give the game a try or if he just really liked the game himself. Um, but. Uh, this game is actually, I would describe it as much more of an intensified version of Let's Go, where you do still have to meet this arbitrary goal just to progress, but it's a lot more in-depth because it's not simply just catching a Pokemon, evolving a Pokemon, although that can be part of it. You have to feed these Pokemon, you have to watch them use certain moves to fill up their research uh, to maximum, and it's all about just splitting that off and doing it as efficiently as possible. Um, Shady and I have actually been kind of working together on a route, that's probably just the most optimal route since the last time you guys featured my run on this, on the podcast. The big thing we've added is uh, the Alpha Sneasel in Alabaster Icelands and um, the use of Stealth Sprays, which are an item you unlock as soon as you get to the second area. Um, basically makes your movements silent. You, you can still be seen, but you just can't be heard. So that makes um, huh. some Pokemon that may have been previously considered unviable much more viable and easy. Uh, uh, about what, what, can you give an example of that, Hawkery? Like yeah. what? Which yeah, Pokemon I have some would in, be? Uh, I have some examples in my run that I've pointed out, but um, the main ones okay. are uh, Mistrevis is now possible uh, in Cornet uh, Cornet Highlands because okay. before Mistrevis uh, are kind of surrounding this Alpha Miss Magius, and you don't even want to go anywhere near there because if the Alpha Miss Magius turns and looks at you, you have to bail. <laughs> even though Mistrevis is technically so easy research. You should have to catch two unseen and three total. And it sounds really easy, just ball, 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 and you're done. But without 
the ability to be silent, it can just be really slow because you have to crouch and walk slowly. Mm -hmm. um, so Mistrevious is one. Uh, Hippopotas in Crimson Mirelands is one that people have had issues with a lot. Because as soon as one notice, notices you, or you know, somewhat even at random, uh, the entire colony just kind of <laughs> assembles and aggros all at once as a family. So <laughs> it's uh, it's not good. But the stealth brace seem to help a little bit. Yeah, unfortunately, I just don't know a whole lot about Shady's run. I know he had a pretty clean endgame. Uh, none of the alpha Pokemon, these lake uh, trials, really stood much of a chance. Because uh, there are ranges to kill on all three of them. And then I believe his Dialga catch was first ball, which is pretty, pretty unlikely at this point, since how many runs we've seen not get it. <laughs> uh, tentacle is not a thing, because the problem with Tentacle is when you approach it, um, as soon as it loads in, the first thing it does is submerge itself to where it cannot be interacted with. And how long it stays submerged for each one can be like 20 to 30 seconds. So it's just not worth waiting around for it to pop its head up just to maybe get it. Oh, it was maybe second ball? Interesting. Yeah, I, sh I remember, because <laughs> I was streaming at the same time. Because, uh, you know, I stream after I get off work. But Shady lives in Finland, so his streams are prone to go live a little bit before mine. Um, and the whole time, I was on a pretty good run, too. And I was just sitting here watching his run. Just, <laughs> just kind of, <laughs> I ended up during cutscenes. And I knew it was probably going to get record at this point. Because why wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah, but yeah, we were we were grinding for 355, and Shady ended up getting this one, which was the first 355. Thinking so, well, it was like an hour difference between this run and your run, which yeah, right now I am in. Yeah, this is about this is <laughs> almost exactly where I was at the same time we stopped Shady's clip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, this was my run that I got an hour after his finish time, uh, 354 59. Um, yeah, that's field and all with that berry for some reason. It was really unfortunate. But yeah, there's a there's several things that I, you know, have pointed out or I have ready to point out that just kind of contributed to this run being so good. Um, if you go to 2740 in the video, at the exact timestamp. <laughs> not not really exactly, just around there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got an do. Eevee encounter in the first area of the game. Is that shiny now, weasel? Yes. <laughs> oh, you can go back a little bit for the shiny right, Yeah, Let's go back a bit more. Uh... <laughs> I forgot, yeah, I forgot about the shiny Brazel. Uh I'm actually going to use this throughout the game for every fight that needs to be sacrificed on. Just just to flex. Uh, oh, nice. But... <laughs> but yeah. Um, Eevee is about a 12... 16% encounter here. And ordinarily, feed four, catch one Pokemon are kind of slow. It takes about 50 seconds to fully complete. But if you can pair it with something else you're doing, it's really not that bad. Like, I'm going to go ahead and give Eevee its first berry here. You need to make sure you don't scare this way I'm crouch walking. Um, I'm actually going to go around this right side and work on the other Buizels that are over here and try to catch them. But still, I'm feeding Eevee, so I'm multitasking and not actually making Eevee's uh, feeding that much of a consequence to me. But yeah, you need to see, you need to sneak up on Buizel as well, but not because you'll scare them, because they are hyper, hyper aggressive. Uh, and as soon as a Pokemon is aggroed, it can't be caught. But yeah, that Boizel got in, and then Eevee is practically done here. Almost. So I, I really didn't waste much time at all going for the Eevee. And as soon as I catch it, its research will be complete. And yeah, because like, you have to catch them as well, don't you? If I remember correctly. Or... You, don't get any, you don't get any research points unless the Pokemon's caught. Yeah. Yeah, because you need to own it in order to even you know have it all count. So I just kind of ran, <laughs> hoping yeah. it would get in. <laughs> Normally, you'd want to kind of sit there and babysit it. Um, I don't know. It's just... Chilling. I'll go fast. Yeah, you gotta go fast. Uh, and then if you go to the one hour and 20 minute mark, I can kind of explain... Uh, kind of give you the best example of stealth spray usage. So, right here, I've just completed um, giving the wall fragment to Kalaba and Slacey on Ruins. And I'm just going to get some of these um, ore deposits for ball crafting later. Uh, coming over here, these are Cricketunes. This is one of the Cricketune spawn areas. For some reason, these Cricketunes are in their 40s in level. And I've gone ahead and used my Stealth Spray, so they can't hear me at all. So I'm able to run up behind each of them and throw a ball at them. <laughs> I, I broke down this tree, and I didn't realize it was shaking. So I have a little bit of an awkward Burmy encounter here. 
One time, that was a Pachirisu, and it sparks uh, paralyzed me, even though I needed to use uh, <laughs> I needed to use Oshawa or Duat in a fight later on, so it was unfortunate. Yeah, sometimes they troll like this, and this one's just clearly seen me, so I didn't yeah. give up. Um, the reason I want to catch the Cricket Tunes um, from behind is because they have a double point research task uh, caught without being spotted. Which, um, you know, if they get in with that ball, just for example, that will give me that double point research. I missed that one somehow. <laughs> um, but then after I catch, or I attempt to catch this one, I run down here for Pachirisu and I accidentally triggered the alpha. Which, uh, if you play this game casually, you don't want to make an alpha mm. angry. So I had to bail, and I actually had no preparations to do this before, but I decided the best course of action was to come over here and go for uh, Barboach while I waited for the Alpha Pachirisu to calm down. Um, Barboach is just three fed and uh, two caught without being spotted for their research. A big part of this game is just memorizing how to finish every Pokemon as fast as possible. Um, just knowing the decks. This game you know, rewards knowledge like that very, very... Uh, um, what I'm looking for very highly I guess yeah these ones are kind of hard to hit for people uh I, I I don't really have any tips it's just you just need to understand the arc and the physics and stuff but yeah they both got in so that was a Pokemon's research fully completed that I wasn't actually expecting to do um but then I come back over here and do the Pachirisus um we can probably let's keep playing for a little bit because this is about to be the hardest section I would believe to be in the run currently. Um, if you want to skip forward a little bit after the patch races, maybe like 30 or 40 seconds. About 30, yeah. you think? Yeah. yeah, so I'm going to break this rock for iron chunks. I'm going to break down this tree for hopo berries, which are one of the crafting components for stealth sprays. Um, then I'm going to cross this river and catch these yanmas. And then here we come to Hippopotas, <laughs> which is... Uh -huh many people's least favorite pokemon in the run um it's not necessarily that hippopotas as a species are are angry it's mainly just these ones that are surrounding an alpha hippo uh alpha hippowdon just when the alpha hippowdon's not feeling good or you know somebody <laughs> somebody heard him i don't know uh all of the hipp hippopotas just instantly like as one aggro like they're all sleeper agents or something um and the goal here is feed six, catch one. So I'm doing pretty well right now. None of them are really angry. You could go for the catch first just to be safer, but once one is caught, um, if another one of them sees that one get caught, they get angry. There, there's like a thousand ways for these things to get angry. We don't even know how it all happens. So <laughs> you just gotta play this very delicately. Um, that was my sixth feed and then I caught it. So it wasn't too bad. I, I threw a ball at that one just in case the first one didn't get in. Um. So that's that. That's probably what people consider to be the hardest section. Uh, right. If you go to 149 in the video. All right. Uh, but just as a quick question, like, has there been any like plans to try and take Hippopotas out? We're about to actually. I think. All right. Um, this is actually uh, different from the start going on. We're actually going to pick a different starter Pokemon, <laughs> and uh, I... it's going to impact the beginning. Is it, is it Syndical, right? I think it's all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Cyndaquil. Yeah, I saw that too. Um, Cyndaquil yes. is the only Pokemon... Oh, Cyndaquil. <laughs> yeah, Cyndaquil is the only Pokemon that actually gets research points from the move it starts with, for some reason. Um, for the first fight against Togepi, um, Cyndaquil has Quick Attack, Oshawa has Tackle, and I don't really know or care what Rowlet has. Oh, I don't know. So, yeah, Cyndaquil is the only one that gets research from that move so that's part of it and then also with it being fire type it can easily take down the Krikatoon uh, boss and uh, as well as Glaceon um, but yeah right there uh, in that segment we just watched uh, I actually got two Vulpixes I was talking about with Eevee where Pokemon that you need to feed for and catch once uh, can take up to 50 seconds but you know that kind the time is essentially cut in half uh, if there's more than one of them so I was able to feed two Vulpixes at the same time and then also two Glamios at the same time because they were also feed four catch one uh, but the Vulpixes were very unlikely to spawn so the fact that i got two is very good um so that's pretty much it for now uh the alpha sneasel is probably the biggest change to this route uh before we were copying the japanese players and just catching uh sneasels in mount and cornet highlands um and they were about level 50 to 56 or something like that 
Uh, if you go to 248, uh, we can watch the Alpha Sneasel. So it's at this moment I realize I don't have lead in balls, which are the most powerful ball you have access to right now and which are very vital in making this catch a 77% or so. Um, so I have to do this with a heavy ball, which is significantly less powerful. Um, so it's probably a good chance to run dies here, just because I didn't have what I needed <laughs> on me. Uh, I've used the self spray so the thing can't see me, or it can't hear me. Raspberries do the same thing they do in Let's Go and increase the catch rate. And uh, it didn't look like it was going to get in, but it did. So we're able to just uh, run right off. <laughs> now, this alpha, as you can see, is level 61, which is much higher than you can get it in Mount Coronet. Um, but also, its first move is actually randomly picked from the move tutor list. So there's a chance that it has Shadow Claw, Shadow Ball, Dark Pulse, Snarl, or Iron Tail to one-shot the Frostlass in this fight and save a turn. Um, but I don't believe I got it, so I had to use a double poison jab to kill the frost last. Right. Um, but probably the Alpha Sneasel's most important contribution to the run is at 322. Uh, probably the scariest thing in this run for a very, very long time was the Alpha Gudra that you have to fight in the end game. Um, they added a move to Hisuian Gudra called Shelter which uh, raises its defense and makes uh, raises its evasiveness, which is not good. <laughs> so, um, Luckily, the Alpha Sneasel actually goes first, which before in the route, nobody went first except for the Gudra. So you'd always most likely get shelter. And then this is a range as well, but I did end up getting the kill there. So that saves over the old route, the old, old route, like maybe like 40 or 50 seconds. Just because turns are very, very slow in this game because there's no way to turn animations off. Oh yeah, there is this. I keep forgetting that with this game. Uh, it's been a while since I've gone around to playing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It is strange. It's like... Oh, sorry. Oh, I was going to say, uh, we can watch a battle at 3.39 and just kind of, you know, understand the meta with battles in speedrun. Yeah. Okay, so we're about to fight Commodo, um, the final battle, final trainer battle in the game. Um, unfortunately, the meta of battles just kind of devolves to wipe, <laughs> wipe swapping, where I, we take turns wiping our Pokemon, <laughs> just KOing them. Um, because Pokemon in this game don't actually get experience until the battle's over. Um, so, just with the way this ends up working, with the way action speed works you'll never just have all of your pokemon alive so only certain pokemon are going to get uh, experience at the end of the battle but um as you'll see here he's going to send in snorlax and then i'm going to die to high horsepower i'm going to send in sneasel in close combat then sneasel's going to die to clefable psychic it just it, it just kind of it's like a ping pong match back and forth of uh killing the other's pokemon um this was probably the cleanest fight of Komodo i've ever had I end up saving 14 seconds on this gold, which I thought the gold already was really, really clean and spotless, but. And this, well, this is also including like, this is including Benny and. No, no, no I actually have, I now have a split um, separate, uh, at, the split starts after I beat Benny and then ends when I beat Commodo. So there's not actually that much like time in between, which ah. is why it's crazy. Which okay. makes it just crazier that it uh, ended up saving that much time. Um, one thing that's really bad RNG is if uh, the Clefable ends up using Calm Mind. But with you having a Hisuian Sneasel out, uh, Poison Fighting, <laughs> it should want a Psychic. It really should. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it still goes for Calm Mind, which is unfortunate. But yeah, from here, the Skunting's going to die, and then Gastrodon's going to come out and uh, Water Pulse and defeat the Golem. Who'd have thought 2022, the year of Gastrodon involved in speedruns? Gastron is actually like a game changer in this run. <laughs> Running this game has improved my uh my esteem of Gastrodon. It's so clutch. Especially um I think we skipped it because I, I forgot to write it down, but the the savvy triple battle in Snowpoint Temple. Mm, yeah, I've um, I don't remember over that. where that is. Uh um, it should be uh, behind yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Right. oh you're oh, right here? there. Yeah, right there. there. Yeah, I'm going up. Oh, this might be after. Uh, it should be 
Uh, just press back a bit. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, so this fight um, is immediately after the fight where we fought the Frost last I was mentioning. Um, we took a lot of damage, but that was intentional. Because all we want to do with the Sneasel is take care of the Rhyperior. That's the only thing Gashron can't reliably take care of. Um, <laughs> the Electivire to the left only has electric moves. So it literally cannot do a single thing to Gastrodon. Um, and then Magmortar only has like Flamethrower and Poison Jab that it likes to use. So Gastrodon comes out and nobody can really do anything. So they just die one by one to Earth Power. Yeah, that is very convenient, it sounds like, for this fight, having a Gastrodon. Yeah, before that off Sneasel, uh, we actually needed Gastrodon to do everything, including killing the Rhyperior. Um, which relied on Gastron being level 40, so it could have mastered Earth Power and be able to use Strong Style. Mm. Um, which, if you're not familiar with that, Strong Style basically makes a move more powerful at the expense of when your next action will come. Um, and also, in some cases, it makes the move more accurate, and it increases the crit stage. Um, but even then, if you did get to level 40, it was still a range based on you know how good your Gastron was. So the, the Sneasel is just welcome again. <laughs> Very, very welcome to the speedrun because of that. Yeah, a level 61. It's like, like 61. Level 61, said. yeah. Yeah, that's going to help out compared to like any level 50 or most level 50s. Mm -hmm. Especially because the damage formula in this game specifically highly, highly rewards level. Like, I'm not sure about the damage formula in other games. I know they all take level into consideration, but mm -hmm. part of the formula is something like attack times 0.2 level times three okay oh so, yes yeah just to give you an idea of That's how the stat difference. yeah um but then i guess at the end we can just check out the palkia battle at 354 oh, okay. uh... mm -hmm. yeah so there's a really cool uh damage boost strat you can go for here with the final boss it's the only this is probably the coolest uh noble to fight or not even a noble, just the coolest boss. Just because the music's really good, and uh, I don't know. None of the other bosses get to implement a damage boost like this. So the first four um, moves it uses are going to be these meteors that come down. They're going to spawn these purple rings that just are constant damage sources. Um, after the fourth one, I'm going to try to stay close to uh, these purple rings and then use them to avoid a much more slower damage source that, are, that he's spitting out. So he's using these uh, blue rings on the bottom um, that knock you all fully down, while these purple rings just kind of stun you for a second. So it's much faster to bump into the purple than it is to take the shot from the blue. I believe the IELs use this a lot too. Um, but we're about done here, and uh, that's it. Fair play, and then, yeah, that's the end time now, isn't it? Oh, no. oh yeah, yeah, on fade out after the boss. Nice yeah. clutch talk. <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of runs ending in fifty or I say a lot. Two runs. Oh no, three runs. No, two uh, runs. If you wanna just... see the Shady said he got all the damage boost, so if you want to pull up the end of his fight real quick and you can see it perfectly. Oh. Uh Shady's. Yeah, the three fifty five fifty six. Give me a second because I normally close them out, but there we go. So... It should be around the three fifty five mark or so. Oh, he, he, I guess he starts his... Oh, no, there we go. Perfect. All right. But yeah, it's going to have the same start, uh, the four meteors coming down. Yeah, I can't imagine what Shady was feeling here, because he's... I mean, look at the look at his PB compared to, you know, what he's, what he's on pace for. Like, you know, you have to throw these bombs perfectly straight. And, you know, they're all thrown exactly deliberately, so doing this on such a pace is just really, really nerve-wracking. But, you know, he's able to clutch that out. I have a question. Can you, I, you, see, I see you do Diog, you go for the Palkia as the last, like, Lord. Is mm -hmm. there, like, ever a situation where you swap the two? Or is it just faster to do Palkia at the end? I've tried to make Palkia work because everything points to it being faster. Arita has faster dialogue at the lake. Um, you know, Palkia is a little bit faster, I think, as a Pokemon sometimes. Yeah. Um, but so. the problem is Palkia is way harder to weaken when you're going to go catch it. 
where um, normal close combat from the Alpha Sneasel does like 75% of Dialga's health because it's still oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Strong close combat to Palkia only does half. So it, it just it puts it in a range that's just not viable to try to catch it at. That, that's a tough typing on Palkia for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing we'd really be able to get in the run that'd be able to do super effective damage to it. Fairy type is in this game, but there's no viable fairy type that you could bring along, I don't think, or anything with a fairy type move. Sorry, the box no one sees the very end. Um, I was thinking though, because like we had O snap on last month, and one thing that I've like noticed when you were like talking about these, the amount like that you, you like you seem to be using the different balls more now. It didn't seem mm -hmm. like that was the case at the time, like a month ago. So like, like has was it just like coincidences that the bits that we just saw now did use stuff like laden balls and heavy balls? Or is that actually no, like no. being taken into account more now? The suggestion to use laden balls is actually shady. Um, a lot of the things that have come up in the run, stealth sprays, uh, laden balls, raspberries, cakes, that, that's all been shady suggestions. Uh, he's been really good about you know kind of pushing the meta of this game. Um, before we would just use the great balls and heavy balls we already had stocked stocked up from when we crafted them in Cobalt Coastlands, and just use the pokeballs that we can buy from the security core guy that stands here. Um, just use the pokeballs for everything else. But leading balls are just so broken. <laughs> they they give you like a two point seven five or two point two five mod uh, times catch rate um, on Pokemon if they're hit with a back shot um and if you know they haven't noticed you at all which is very very powerful compared to uh, great balls and other things like that you almost need to be close to them anyway because they're very heavy right so they don't go very far if you throw them yeah they have a horrible horrible arc um so before with the alpha's measel you'd have to like sneak up crouch walk and you know it only it's only eating the berry for like seven seconds actually so your window to get close to it and throw the ball is very very small um but with the alpha or with the stealth sprays you can just literally run directly up to it and not even make a make a disturbance at all but the interesting thing about this game especially here at this point is that it becomes a completely different speed run um, because right now we're completely done with research we do not need to research another pokemon um, the last requirement was the area before so now it becomes more like a traditional speed run where we rely more on fight strategies and uh, ranges and stuff like that. Although we don't really have a good damage calculator yet, <laughs> but most of the strategies are consistent. How was the catch go here for this? Uh, it looks like he used a cake, which, according to Cerebi, should be the most beneficial thing you can use. You saw it change to like a yeah. green catch thing there. He just, he didn't care. <laughs> uh, I would have normally stuck around to make sure it got in, but. I guess he was uh, he confident. To take that risk. Yeah, I'm confident. Yeah, confident. Yeah. You know, I mean, the... we've both done our independent testing on it, and the cake doesn't seem to help that much more. What were we gonna say? I was gonna say, um, there's like the, like, do you know like the percentage chances with like the green and amber? Oh, is that it's... not known yet? I mean, all we know is just what's on Sarah because um, right. you know, we just we've heard that they've done data mining and stuff. Allegedly, it's the same catch rate as if the Pokemon was sleeping. Um, but we've done, you know, testing sample sizes like 30 or 40, where we just sit here and try to catch the thing over and over again. It seems to be about 70 to 80 percent for each. Okay. Okay, he's running towards Garrick after the throw because he's out of the range where the Sneasel could possibly aggro him. Because once it breaks out of the ball, it's not very happy about that. So it just immediately looks for a human target. Okay. And if you're not there, it's pretty good, I guess. And then if you catch it, it's optimal, which true. It. Yeah, it's been a good week for Arceus, and I think it's going to be even better moving forward since the route is changing a little bit dramatically. Yeah, it's not even over yet because there's also, I believe this is the current Japanese world record. I don't know if there's an unverified uh, one yet, but yeah. this is Karo's any yeah. uh, percent Japanese world record, a three fifty five fifty two. So, um, if you go to, uh, I want to say it's like the twenty nine minute mark, twenty eight. Of the run. Boom, I'll go back. Okay, perfect. So 
Uh, right now, we're off to the right side of the first camp, and this is where the new strategies come into mind. This is actually the run that is inspired us to change. Um, beautiful these beautiful eyes yeah. are level mm-hmm. like 20, 20s, like 19 to 22 is their range, I believe. Um, and killing them as a level 9 Cyndaquil, you get a massive EXP boost. And it also is just research for Beautifly. Um, so the most important thing you can do with this run going forward is decreasing the amount of turns battles take, because battles are just really, really slow. So um, by doing this, you're able to just finish the fights in the rest of this area and in the next area in way less turns. Yeah, because you're just like, pre-like loading your experience. Oh yeah, we're just completely overloading it. Oh yeah, and this also yeah. makes um, uh, it allows us to to run around and catch a lot less Pokemon. Like the Eevee you saw me catch, we don't even go over there anymore. <laughs> um, because doing this, we have three Wurmples in our party right now, and we're evolving all three of those Wurmples, which will finish Wurmple, and which will potentially finish Silcoon if two of them evolve into that. So we only need 500 points to leave the area. So that's kind of it's kind of child's play now. Where before, you know, 500 points can be the reason you reset 30 minutes in. <laughs> so. But yeah, besides this, uh, I can't think of anything else they do that we don't. Um, they also use Geodude and Graveler research, which is just catch three and evolve all three of them. Um, but Geodude spawns are not guaranteed, so we'll probably not be implementing that. I don't know, they do some weird strats. If you go to the Komodo fight in their, uh, <laughs> in their run, uh, the, the team's gonna look very, very different. Oh, there you go, yeah. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, right there. Too. <laughs> very, very different team. Why is he finishing with Rollout? Uh, Beautifly has a bonus task for Death by Rocks. Oh, so, so he's the using Dust Clops. <laughs> he's using the Dust Clops you're required to catch earlier in the run. Uh, and I guess he's gonna go for Agile Dark Pulse. But the dust cloud still dies, so like I part of me wishes I spoke Japanese so I could just you know ask what the, <laughs> what the mentality behind this is. Um, but you know, it beats me. But you know, it, it works for them. I mean, my run in Japanese is only a 359, so it's, it's much better than what I was able to do. Uh, do you know like the difference between or like an estimate between English and Japanese? Or is that I believe really... it saves at least. Because in my run, uh... Uh, you just cutting out here, by the way. So could you? Oh, I'm like, sorry. How, how much yeah. time was it again? Sorry. Um, my PB is a three fifty nine twelve, and I believe the difference is about four minutes compared to English. Because um, the end of my run is pretty much perfect uh, in English, but their run is two minutes faster than the, from the end game. It's two minutes faster despite you know not really having much time to save over me and i've i've experienced in the beginning of the run um in the first 20 minutes it saves 40 seconds on text so it's probably a little bit more than a little bit more than four minutes but four minutes is about the safe estimate i think okay but yeah just like black and white 2 um the reason their times are quote unquote longer is because they wait exactly five minutes after we end to end on the credits and they also start yeah. 35 seconds earlier Oh, do they actually like start from language select? Mm-hmm. They start from language select. Yeah. There's not been any that... push forward on starting on the start of select for English and has there? No, there hasn't, right? Uh, there's been no discussion on that since it initially came up. And yeah, you see, they're here using a uh, you know a much smaller Sneasel. <laughs> they have mm-hmm. the two uh, Sneasels they caught in Mount Coronet. Um, do you want to show that? I... It might be around uh, the two hour and like forty, two hour and thirty minute mark. Yeah. Right while there. you do that, I have a question about the text. I know you mentioned it before. Is Level. is Japanese just faster because like it has less text boxes total? I believe Japanese advances at a slower rate to try to like compensate, but oh Japanese the the just... okay. So the characters actually matter. Like how many characters are printed? Yes. Um, okay. So I've been told that's like that Japanese... a lot, like black, white, too, in that aspect. Yeah. Because in Gen Five, seemed... Japanese text is slower. Yeah, it seemed like they tried to, you know, make it the same as English, you know, just to avoid everyone playing on Japanese. But Japanese characters just are so much less than English characters, and because they mean more. 
Mm -hmm. um, it just still saves a lot of time despite them, you know, technically lowering how fast the text itself scrolls. Yeah, they're using their raspberries here to catch these Sneasels. The problem with these Sneasels that I've found is they can be level 53 at their lowest. And at that point, they haven't even mastered close combat, so they can't use strong or agile close combat. Um, and you kind of just have to take what you're given. But with the Alpha Sneasel, it's always level 61, and it's pretty reliable to catch, so. I've tried, you know, talking with uh, Corolio and Dorasi about <laughs> using the Alpha Sneasel, and they just, they want to do their thing, and that's, that's fine. They prefer the Coronet Sneasels, for sure. Dorasi's like, is it Tarasi very new to Pokemon runes, or I've done other runes, but either way, like I know Tarasi was mentioned last month, uh, like I was not mentioned them. And they actually, it was going to be Tarasi's rune that was going to be shown until you know, Caro got this rune yesterday, I think it was, mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, yesterday. This could be a very mean April fall joke from them, I've just realised. Uh, but no. Uh, but yeah, so like, Tarasi seems to be like, I've seen so I've done like quite a fair few things in the early versions of the route. The side things, I think. If I'm trying yeah, to remember right. from a month ago. Tarasi was using, um, we were showing the beautiful eyes and how the strat is now to kill them. Um, but so what Tarasi was doing is he was actually catching one. And that's a much harder task in and of itself. Because, <laughs> mm. you know, th those things are in their 20s. You don't even have a star yet. <laughs> so... They're not even remotely able to be caught in a timely manner, so he was constantly resetting in Obsidian Field Lands, which is unfortunate. Uh. But yeah, one thing uh, Corolio is doing here in this fight specifically, um, you'll notice after his Skun Tank dies, he has kind of like a like a ragtag party, <laughs> just a bunch of random Pokemon he's caught in the area. Because the only thing he came in here with was Ursaring and Gastrodon. Everything else that's in this party, he caught here, so it's it's definitely interesting. It's very different from what we do. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's like it's just cool seeing like how because we're still this. I came up about end of June, so like we're hitting like just over two months at this point. Still very early on in the speedrun life cycle, and so like mm -hmm. things are going to carry on changing. Probably for a fair while, I'd assume. Yeah, it makes the game a little bit hard to learn. Um, you know, I know Shady was having difficulties learning the game because you know when people want to learn a game, they look for a route. Yeah. They look for something clear and concise that's perfectly you know, consistent. But what you do in the game just changes depending on what you're given. So you kind of need to learn everything. You need to learn the whole decks. You need to. You just need to go head first and just memorizing things because um, it's the best way to succeed in this game. And hopefully soon we'll have a route that's pretty pretty easy to follow and pretty consistent without much variance to it and any variances are brought up and listed as variants but we're not quite there yet hopefully soon though hey i'll say like you mentioned like there's a lot of like memory involved in this i you've come from pmd how much does that help with pmd because might be wrong here do you, do you do a lot of the japanese runs with pmd or uh, I have never done a Japanese run. Right, game, but it's much harder because uh, there's so many items you need to use and so many items you pick up um, that you know you need to know what every single item in your bag does. And uh, but Shady has done Japanese uh, PMD um, fair bit, I think. Uh, this game is just really easy to run in Japanese because the only thing I really need to know is um, what research tasks I'm doing. For example, with the Starlies in the very very beginning, um, I can see that if something says this research task is done like four out of five i know the only thing that's possible to be four out of five is unseen catches because catches overall it goes out of six so it's just small things like that if you just know um you know what it's trying to tell you without having to read the text it's really easy nice. plus also, i can just tell when i've finished a pokemon research yeah but also just not gonna talk about phasing into the Voltorpia. Or the I, I was noticing that while I was talking. <laughs> <laughs> I've never ever seen that before. I mean, hey, hey, if it if it works, it works. I guess it will. Yeah, if it works, it works. It seems a lot easier than yeah. just constantly just spin to winning like we do. We just kind of walk around it all day. There's another cool thing. Actually, though, 
uh, mentioning PMD, uh, going on to secure accounts, uh, rescue, uh, yeah, it's just rescue team, isn't it? So rescue team DX, 80% Wonder Mill, uh, world record 234.24. Uh, yeah, and how so... this is your area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Secure Account came into the PMD community a couple years ago. Uh, he posted a lot of extremely, extremely good times in the Sky special episodes. And, you know, with the name and with, you know, the emulator, with, you know, no prior experience in the Discord, obviously we're like, who is this guy? You know, we need to spend a long time verifying this runs because, you know, we don't know if they're cheated or anything. <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, over time, he's proven himself to be a very, very legitimate competitor in these games. And uh, this is actually the first time he's ever attempted a game on console. Because um, every other game he runs, he's run on the emulator categories. And uh, pretty much since this game came out, this was the game that got Shady in the PMD speedrunning. Um, Shady's just kind of been the king. And nobody's even come close. But uh, Secure was probably the only one willing to learn the game at a top level uh, really, really quickly. And he's... Uh, he was kind of taken over there and kind of proven that somebody else can put up those kind of times. Uh, this run specifically, Wonder Mail in Rescue Team DX, uh, is a little bit reset heavy. Because how it's different from No Wonder Mail is you Wonder Mail in these uh, DX gummies in the very beginning. And when you ingest one, it gives you a rare quality, um, which is like a bonus, a passive bonus that affects you the entire run. And bar none the best one to possibly get and it's not even close is a bonus called lonely courage which uh when you're alone and you don't have any of your teammates in the same room it increases your attack and defense by a decent amount and the main strategy with this game is split up where you set everybody to go a different direction and you all walk different ways and you can actually switch between the lit the leaders by the press of a button so lonely courage affects the entire team and it just basically makes it way way more trivial Right. and then you know obviously if you don't get it you have to reset you, you just can't compete yeah. but so yeah then they like mentioned in the notes so this was this was the first category that was the world record so it was the first console world record as well as you mentioned it was emulator runs pro yes which oh, congrats it. there uh because yeah, it's a lot of PMD rescue team. This is the any percent no one to mail world record. Yeah. Two forty six seventeen. Yeah, this has basically just been secure accounts march. Uh so this category in particular, Shady, I believe, uh, would tell you this is this was probably his strongest record. Um, just given that the next time on the leaderboard was more than ten minutes slower. Um, because everyone else is struggling to get sub three and Shady has a two forty seven, I think, in this category. So it's just a it's a massive massive difference, um, and I think he attributed a lot of that run success to luck and just other factors. But you know, with enough grinding, somebody can beat it. And this record was standing since September of 2020, so it, it finally finally fell. Yeah, this was also the second ever sub three as well, because Shady was the only one that had done it before. Wait, so do you know when Shady had the? I uh, got. Oh wait, I guess it'll be in September 2020. I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, that's just mind. when his. That's just when his. Um, his PB that Secure Account's beating here got beat. I don't know exactly when Shady first got his world record for. Uh, oh. to, for Rescue Team DX in general. Okay. I'd assume it had to have just been earlier that year because. He kind of just hit with all these games. He definitely just hits the ground running. You know, he doesn't really. You know, take months and months to get a good time. It just kind of happens over a weekend or over a week like may of that year he says okay. and, and it wanna... only came out it only came out that january so the fact that somebody got a record near launch and it was the record for two years after the game came out is very very impressive yeah may maybe june okay thank you thank you for that um i to quickly jump into the last one sure because this is the, and you've said no wind mail Japanese world record, 259.57. First sub yeah, three. So this, yeah, first sub three of the game. Um, once again, just like all the other games, uh, it's longer just because they time through credits. Uh, also, I believe I've seen some discussion in the. They actually. Uh, you're creating out again, sorry. Are. Oh, I apologize. 
Um, it's probably something on my end, been... so don't worry. Oh, okay. Uh, I believe the, the discussion in the Discord has been that Japanese is actually just overall slower. I can't remember what the reasoning was. It might be the text um, or certain aspects of the game. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the Japanese don't actually actively run Rescue Team DX. Uh, so it's kind of just, you know, international players playground <laughs> right now. Uh, oh yeah, they have the text speed in Japanese. That's what it is. Oh. That's a choice. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, generally, like the reason I gave earlier for why I don't run Japanese, uh, it's a major barrier for <clears throat> international players competing with the Japanese. But it's not impossible. You know, if you just write down some notes, <laughs> as in katakana, hiragana, like if you just yeah. know what you're looking for in the items, it shouldn't be too bad. Yes, I mean. Tell me if I'm wrong here. I believe it's the like the main Japanese mystery dungeon run that I know is Shigumi, right? Uh, so, like yeah, not not necessarily yeah. for this game, but for like the earlier games at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Shigumi is probably the most popular Japanese mystery dungeon speedrunner. He was the world record holder uh, a while ago. I think you think he still has third place in this game behind Shady and Secure. Um, Shigumi mostly just focuses on the DS games, uh, Rescue Team, Blue Rescue Team, and uh, Explorers of Sky and Time Darkness. I get this oh yeah, it's the easiest. Oh. Uh, it's the easiest PMD to play in Japanese because um, the items have their own individual images, which is new to the series. Like when you look in the bag, you can see pictures of every item you have if you scroll over it. That's actually another thing that makes Arceus easier. Is like every time you pick up an item or have an item put in your bag, um, you can see the item off to the right side of the screen. Uh, it shows you a picture of the item, so I know what I've picked up. So things like that make it easy. I love the Switch games. Yeah, that, I think like BDSP does that. Pretty sure Sword Shield does that. You know, while since I pay attention to the bag items, mm, but, it makes the game very accessible. Yeah, to play it definitely does. Yeah. Japanese. I like, this because again, like doing this every month. There's always a mystery dungeon world record, at least one. Normally from like a, a small group of people as well, but like. One thing I do know is it seems to be a lot less rescue team DX world records in general. Is this just the reason? Like, you know, like is the reason why this just hasn't taken, like, has it, like, hasn't been taken to as much per se? Maybe as the DS ones. So with Pokemon Mystery Dungeon players, they can kind of jump around to any game and be competent in it because it just mm -hmm. takes a general skill set that can be translated over to all the games. Except rescue team DX is very very different. Right. Um, it basically changes some of the hotkeys to pass turns. You have to press a different button. It's the only game that features leader switching in the main section of the speedrun uh, to a high capacity. Um, uh, you have to understand uh, the items. You have to understand you know, management of uh, party, when to heal people. It's just it's a very, very different speedrun. It's almost its own genre. Um, I've, I've personally struggled with it a lot. It, just, it also has like a half a second extra of unnecessary input delay <laughs> over the first one uh, which makes it a little bit harder for me to play personally and I'm sure that's not a story that's different for other people um, but it's not a I don't think it's a bad game I think Perfect. it just uh, takes somebody that's willing to sit down and you know accept they don't know what they're doing and learn how to play the game because I'm a bit hard headed I, 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 w I walk into Mystery Dungeon I'm like I know what I'm doing the game's just not cooperating but I don't so I just need somebody that's willing to sit down and learn it so people like Shady and people like... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, those are people that are uh, they're, they're lab rats. They'll, they'll sit down and learn every aspect of the game before they ever touch it. I like to just go in head first and learn by failure. You know, given that my my first RCS time was 6 hours and 53 minutes, and Shady's first RCS time was 4 hours and 20 minutes or something, so <laughs> you could tell who prepared <laughs> before they went into it. I mean, I followed more into your category health. I think it took me... Like when I tried when I was learning Colo, I think it took me three weeks just to finish a run. And now like, Colo is a mean run to be fair as well, but yeah, it's more fun I find. And I don't yeah. know if that's the same for you. Yeah, unfortunately, just ever since RCs came out, me and Shady went to that. Uh, PMD's been in a little bit of a dry period with players. Um, people are still playing, obviously. Yeah. But that's just why these are the only records to show, uh, just because you know there's not a whole lot of people playing it at the current moment. But I'm sure it'll pick back up pretty soon. 
hopefully just now this like that was uh like last pmg but like no, i've not got a transition that's good for this but either way this is wing markets uh stadium gym leader castle round one world record a 132.52 this this is a ridiculously impressive run like even from my like, not running stadium i can tell this is impressive so this was like a 5 minute 43 uh, second PB. Uh, it beat the console world record by a minute 34. It beat the emulator world record by a minute and 4 seconds. And this ended up being like, so like, if you take it with the emulator runs included, because they share the leaderboards, but they hit them by default. This, like, wing market jumped from 28th to 1st with this run. Jeez. Yeah. It's like a, it's again. I don't know much. How I, I don't know how like it's uh, how how wing market is considered in stadium run, but like anyone getting a jump that big seems like it's just it's a, it like it seems like has it really happened in other Pokemon runs? Like um. outside of maybe like the initial first months or so. This seems like such a massive jump and like such an impressive run as well. Average like, for seems... PMD. <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like not out of the ordinary for like you know there's there's good runners of you know ga other games that start playing a new game and then drop a pretty good time, but in Wink Market's case, I'm pretty sure that they've had um, a lot of runs that were on record pace. Luckily, this run was the record. <laughs> this is really good. Congrats. Yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, like, at this point, I just finished the Sabrina split. It's 5 minutes, 35 seconds ahead of the world record. Which, again, this is stadium. So I feel like you expect to lose a fair chunk of that time, to be fair. But still, how, like, how such... I know is it, this is just, this run is just like amazed me in like like uh, I actually I actually caught the end of this run and seeing because it just actually this is camera eventually camera on eventually you can get like actually as well world record cam world record cam and actually I can get the audio in because I've set that up now aha. Uh -huh. You can actually, yes. it's just like seeing play like, reaction. I don't know. It, 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 it was it was so good to watch. It was like it's one of those times. It's one of those moments where like you just feel well. I mean, you always feel happy for a world record, really. But just oh my god, <laughs> I get it. I can hear the audio. Yeah, I don't know. It was just I don't know. I was so happy watching this, and like I feel like just I think this is the thing. yes. You can just get the reaction as well. I, I can know. hear the pop off. Oh, yeah, you won't be able to hear it through this call, will you? No. <laughs> uh, it's all there to do. I'm all about watching pop offs. I enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> this looks very good, very emotional. Yeah. It's very emotional. But also, I am um, just as well, context it. No one had a. Oh, wait, well, no one had the console 133. Uh, emulator was very high 133. This like I don't know is this is probably one like, to me at least this seems to be one of those world records that seems like it's going to be really difficult to beat similar to Bolton's uh, like the old it was the old call record at this point because it did get beaten by Xyron after a route change but it's almost like it's, got, it's very difficult run to beat. Never mind the fact that Stadium sounds like, also seems like to be one of those runs that is difficult just to finish in general. At least quickly. So congrats to Wink Market. Uh, then there is also a Pokemon Ranger World Record. Uh, did you get an Almanite at the end there? Sorry, just did get an Almanite. Yes, did get an Almanite. That's your grand prize. Oh, man. Hey, the kind of the god, kind of godlike, kind of godlike. Yeah, deserved. 
Yeah, so we have Midori Kase with the Ranger any percent DS plus 3GS Japanese world record. Which the Japanese categories are the main uh, runs for Ranger. Uh, they used to actually be combined to the language boards. So everyone just ran Japanese because it was faster. Uh, but this is a 23506. It was a Overall, it was a really good start that seemed to last all the way till the end, really. Still a few splits where they just seemed to be over a minute's worth of time loss, but still managed to like hold out towards the end. Uh, I'm not too familiar with Ranger Speed Run, but I feel like this would destroy your DS screen if you buy it after so many attempts. I think Ranger was dominated for a long time by Huma's DS. I'm looking at the leaderboard now, and Midori only just beat Huma's record in October, and before that, Huma had the record for two years. So it was a little yeah. bit stagnant until Midori came up. Yeah. This is a DS game? Yeah, DS game. Um, and played it on 3DS. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's. I don't know. Like I think this is on, on DS, on this one. Oh, no, this is on 3DS, yeah. It's on 3DS. Did they reformat it to make it either way? Um, but yeah, so like I know whom has at least the Guardian Signs Ranger World Record, might also have Shadow of Almia as well. Like, whom does like whom just typically dominate Ranger? Yeah, so, we're, we're, we're proud of him in PMD, yeah, that's where he started. <laughs> the, our greatest export. Um, he had a 238 in this game, and then it looks like in October of 2021, Midori got a 236, and then since then he's had the record, and then he just got this. Okay. Who does everything? <laughs> like, who does everything? So, uh, but he started with PMD, was it? Yeah, yeah, his first run was uh, Blue Rescue Team. Huh. A little bit of human knowledge, a little human lore. And then one last, the last noted run. Headbob. Hey, I mean, I, I, I'll let you say this to be fair, because uh, I, I actually don't know. <laughs> Headbob kind of like dropped this, and I was like, "Oh, play Gen Four now." <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's um, it's Renegade Platinum. As you can see, it's like instant text. That's just how it is with um these uh ROM hacks. Um, but, well, this this one specifically, this is a sixty FPS patch. Yeah, so there's, it's there's it's like similar. Categories. Yeah. Similar to um, Sacred Gold and Storm Silver. Exactly. Aspect. Yeah. Um, so this chat dot here is, um, I believe, um, is a modded version of Charap in regular Platinum, but it has, I had Bob told me this. It has like a modified nature. I think it's modest, and it has like thirty one IVs and like speed and special. So it's That's like. Correct really good also like chatter is a buffed move it has like 110 base power and it always confuses so it's like really clutch for, for focus ashmons yeah, really I interesting in this hack, sorry in this hack also um Chitot's stats are buffed as well so it has like yes. 110 base special attack or something yes, that like that. <laughs> yeah this they is a... they love chat dot here <laughs> This is a Dreano hack. He's actually the same person that made the Storm Silver and Sacred Gold. And actually, I think right. Bob told me recently he's working on a speedrun of uh, the new... Volt White 2? Yeah, the Volt White 2 yeah. Blaze Black 2 Redux that just came out. I'm following the routing in the Discord. It's it's pretty wild. There's... <laughs> Do you know what they're doing at the moment? Is it stolen? Look... Right? Do you know what main they're going with at the moment? For full white uh, they were looking at Flareon, I think. Oh, Flareon, okay. Uh, but it could it could change. I'm not sure how much Headbob knew about Plat, but can you utilize picking the boy is not optimal. <laughs> Headbob, how much did you know? You're in the chat. <laughs> Sorry, though, I could you off then help? Oh, I was gonna say, is it possible to use any kind of manips just like the original black and white too, or did they change? crucial things probably you're able to use minutes yeah so i think you can yeah but i don't think they do i'm not sure oh you battle dawn okay here here I, here i am chatting live on the podcast unprovoked 
Boys it looks Lola. crazy. <laughs> yeah, the six the sixty FPS patch just makes. Oh my look, gosh! Uh... <laughs> How did you pass that optional? Head bob. <laughs> that psychic tornado guy. Wow. Like it looks like a one point time speed video, but there's a sixty <laughs> FPS patch included that just makes things like way way faster. Oh, the rock's gone. It's... Oh. I will apparently already hit it. <laughs> All right. So there's no um, there's no disobedience in this hack, so you can get oh, that's... The, tra the trade experience, extra trade experience as well. Yeah, it's also level 100 at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like... Traded mons are god item. That candy floss. Candy floss, boo, boo candy floss. <laughs> They have they have a good track record. Yeah, they do. As a more of a, more of a candy force this chat up. Guy myself. What was that? Sorry. More of a quackling guy myself. Oh, quackling's good too. Uh... I mean, quackling is is important to be fair. <laughs> yeah, this is the last. That no, that was the last noted room. There was a lot. We've been doing this for an hour and fifty about <laughs> yeah i think having two people who are very passionate and getting just a crap ton of runs for their respective games are would make oh, a, a long process good. it's cool i like i like this this is yeah, I, 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 this was fun for me <laughs> but last we must go on to the marathon runs that have been and starting off with no reset uh, x levity or uh, roy French. I could not do French. Uh, this is uh, Rock Dex with blue any percent no save corruption. Rock through walls route. Um, didn't end up finishing, but I think I ended up get I ended up going to like a glitch exhibition, uh, exhibition I believe. So there is that. There's also a yellow task uh, glitch list uh, from Ti Kevin with uh, and actually I won't say the end time is. Feel like there'd be somewhere that you could actually watch this live, but I don't know where you can. I didn't think to ask Kevin in time. Oh, well, I didn't think to ask Kevin. Probably should have done that. My bad. But either way, that is uh, from Book Eye Speed Bash 2022. Uh, Ian, this is your run. Do you want to talk about it? If you, yeah, so this is um, this is a run of Fire Red Leaf Green with Bulbasaur. Um, I, know, I just really like Bulbasaur. It's it's a terrible Pokemon for the speed run, but the road the road is very interesting. Uh, I did this for like a marathon supporting relief efforts in Ukraine. As you can probably tell, I did not mean to hit that spinner. I just didn't stop in time. <laughs> it's, uh, it's she's not that bad. Uh, the run itself was okay. I mean, this this runs really hard to get like really good. Like RNG and luck, and have everything come together in because there's just so many things that could go wrong. Champion fight, all the Elite Four actually are just really silly, except for I guess Bruno's not too bad, but the rest of them have really weird or just really silly setups. <laughs> um, if you want to go to the champ fight, which is near the end, won't yeah, spend too much time here. Generally bad in speedruns, <laughs> yeah. The, the the Venusaur is plus attack nature and in Gen 3 um, Grass is special. You barely use any grass moves because grass is terrible. So you end up just using a lot of like moves like return and hyper beam. Um if you actually want to just like back up a little bit, actually. Uh like right before I started the champ. There we go. Not sure if this is Second try, so there's a bit of a second try champ. So the, the champ strat, you can set up the champion with Bulbasaur, but the Pidgeot's just awful because it has Aerial Ace, which is super effective. So you have to set up like two X defends, a bunch of guards, like at least two guard specs, and then hope that you don't get crit. Um, so a really safe strat that I believe Xarian came up with is just use the Lapras and lead it with Parish Song. The problem with this strat is if your Lapras has bad defense, which this one actually did. This is the second time I tried this fight, and the Lapras just died turn one. So if you die turn one, you either have to reset and try again, or just switch to the really risky strats. Uh, but luckily, the second try, I um, 
got the Parish Song off, and then you pretty much just let your other Mons die, let the Parish Song tick down until you send out either a Magikarp or a Sandshrew. And uh, he switches out on the last Parish Song to Executor, which is the safest Mon to set up on with, uh, with Venusaur. No Psychic. It has Egg Bomb, Sleep Powder, Light Screen, and I don't remember what its fourth move is, but it's consequential. Nice. I like or when... This... um. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I just want to say, I like when alt mains use like their, their weaker attacking stat as their main, you know, way of attack. Yeah. I know like Dragonite in HGSS does that too using a special instead of attack because it's like mostly Dragonair the entire run. Yeah, yeah Venusaur has much better special attack than attack. There's a, there is a strat that I'm going to be doing, well, I have a sneak peek on. I'm doing this run again in another, um, another marathon in, in uh, Face My Feroes where I'll be using a female Venusaur and using a Tract. Uh, that's something I came up with. I'm not sure if it's faster, yes. but it, it's definitely a lot more fun. Attract is god item. <laughs> I, I took, love took attract. inspiration from from Heart Gold Soul Silver. Yeah, <laughs> glitched Minipolis. Uh To answer Ananon's question, I did do donations in this run five five dollars to charity uh, for each tackle, leech seed, hyper beam, or razor leaf miss. I ended up missing eleven times, so was. Uh be doing the same thing for face my heroes as well so like a fun little thing we like to do in some of us like to do in uh fire leaf green is donate for misses duh so, only the mega kicks miss isn't it for any percent yeah for like the square, square route you, you square the route, yeah. Misses. yeah i missed tackle like nine times and then one leech seed and then one hyper beam i think so Hyper Beam is a bad one to miss because you usually use it at the end fight because the because of the recharge, and very often like the, the the thing you're using it on is really strong, and you can just get destroyed. But, uh, yeah. run. Yep. It's not really. I wouldn't recommend grinding it. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty brutal. If you like Bulbasaur, go for it. I guess. Huh. I remember watching. I remember Damon used to grind this, I believe. Like, like Mind of Damon. Yeah, Damon did a very strange Agatha. So for Agatha in this run, you you get Mimic and then Mimic Shadow Punch, and what's that's really great because Agatha's Gengar uses Double Team, and then Shadow Punch can't miss, so it's perfect. But like Damon caught him a chop, evolved it to Machoke, and then used Foresight. It was very interesting. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Want to watch that it's on the it's on the leaderboard wait so like it used foresight and then died and then you can hit it with venusaur yeah, something like that i didn't know foresight did that wow maybe it maybe uh, killed it with machoke i don't remember but the, the the mimic is definitely better yeah. Yeah, then uh fourth marathon link to the cure 2022 uh, Shifty, uh, oh, Shifty Club with red aim percent glitchless blindfolded, also in a treadmill. Um, like a 232.58. I mean, blindfolded runs are difficult enough. They're in a treadmill, I guess, as well. Just to up a level. Blindfolded treadmill, aim percent glitchless. I don't see this record being beaten soon. I don't <laughs> either, to be fair. And then the last one, which is earlier this day, maybe like a, like four hours ago at this point, maybe something like that. Uh, Speedcon 2022, uh, SL lead with red 80% glitchless, no instant text, the 20206. Uh, he got bullied, I believe, throughout this entire run. But still, wasn't a weed for managing to finish it. But that's, that's all the past marathon runs. We have a lot of upcoming marathons. <laughs> gonna be a lot. It's gonna be a long yeah. one. Uh, next month, going through all these. Sign off. Uh, Mid spring speed fling. 
Uh, call we made with Pokey Clicker, Kanto Champion, Auto Clicker, Codeless on the 3rd at 20 past 3 in the morning. This is all in UK time. No, it's not. Where is it? Things have been changed around. Oh, no. There we go. Uh, 10 to 4. Still not the best time for me to watch, at least. But great for anyone in the US or just not in Europe, I guess. Uh, there's also really, really lots of war. Uh, three. A primal Pizza with Red Aim Sent Glitchless Classic on the 7 uh, at 3 in the afternoon. There's also Pwn New with New Snap All Pokemon on the 17th as I try and find it. Uh, one of the last runs, I guess it turns out. Uh, yep. At uh, around half uh, 1 in the morning. Then there's Face My Fear Rose. Which it's a Kingdom Hearts Pokemon Cross speedrun, not speedrun, uh, marathon. Cross community, the marathon. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of Pokemon runs. Um, I see as you're in it. Do you want to take this? <laughs> so we have Amoeba being Emerald at any percent glitchless on the 9th, 2 p.m. K time, and then. I'll be doing Leaf Green with Venusaur again at uh, six. Well, it's just after six p.m. And we have uh, Joker and T Pat doing Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee uh, Co-op Diploma. That'll, that's always a fun one, just before midnight. And the following day, we have Aspect doing Shining Pearl, any percent no to bounds at two p.m. Uh, followed by Chrysosaurus doing Legends Arceus any percent at 3 p.m. Uh, and then Epic Yoshi Master doing Pokemon Mr. Dungeon Explorers of Sky at 11.30 p.m. Uh, and... The randomizer tendon and blitz is a little bit weird. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you about this. <laughs> so, so yeah, we had a tournament um, with Speed Gaming Live 2021 uh, last year. Um, raised a ton of money somehow. Uh, and I came up with this format because asking a bunch of people to complete the full game in a randomizer setting was a little bit hard. So we had a randomizer built up until the Groudon boss um, with all the cutscenes removed and everything. And there wasn't even Groudon at the end there, so we couldn't call it beat Groudon. So I came up with the 10 Dungeon Blitz randomizer name. <laughs> so that's basically what the, what's going on there. Uh, it's a randomizer to defeat uh, the boss at the end of the 10th dungeon. That's a nice, like, one hour long run. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. It's really not bad at all. And then at the end of the event, uh, this actually changed. Uh, she was initially being black two, white two, I think, but now it's a surprise alt main in platinum. So that will be oh, very interesting. interesting. Uh, it won't be. It won't be Munchlax. I can I'd probably tell you that. Yeah, that for <laughs> four twenty, I don't think. Yes, yeah. it's the Munchlax time frame. It's like ten hours. Interesting. Pretty interesting to see what it is. Yeah. Hopefully, something not done yet. Oops. These stuff or trans lives. Uh, do you want to carry on taking them to be fair? Yeah, sure. Um, so we have Bear Chris doing trading card game 90% glitchless on the 10th of April before 6 a.m. Then New Amber is doing Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee percent and then <laughs> Jordan has in brackets glitchless question mark. So we'll see if she goes for uh any of the skips or not if not it's a marathon go for it well go for it so those so those are the two runs in this event yep uh then this is archie uh, archithon 3 which i believe is the celeste speedrun community's non-celeste speedrun marathon but also has celeste in for like uh what do you call it? Like, not any percent, basically, or like the main categories, I believe. Showing off side hustles, I guess. Yeah, I don't think that's a bad idea, to be fair. It's pretty. Yeah, it's content. Yeah. Uh, it's content. Yeah, and then this is uh, on the tenth at just before half five in the afternoon. Uh, Frozen Flygon versus Water with Flavor, with Poker Clicker Co-op Kanto Champion Auto Clicker. Uh. And there's also um, 
Brat. Oh, this is Portuguese. Ascoa. I was gonna look Portuguese. Yeah, it's uh, Brazilians against time is uh, Brat. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but 2022, uh, LD with Res Custom Starter Snorlax at 2 p.m. on the 12th of April. And then. Also LD again with Stadium 2 Challenge Cup on the 13th at quarter past four. Both of them in the afternoon. There is also Game Over Cancer, Spring 2022. Uh, Pro Peace with Red Aim percent Glitchless on the 16th of April at half one in the afternoon. Down here. There we go. And then last but not least, there is Retrothon 2022 with a Dijon Ketchup uh, doing Blue Reverse Badge Order on April 19th at 4 past 4 in the morning or just a bit after. That is the upcoming marathon runs that I could find. If okay. I missed one, I'm sorry. <laughs> there was a, there's a lot though of marathon runs coming up. So. Plenty. It's, it's crazy you can find all of these because I would not know where to look. Uh, I spend a I spend a lot of time on Hararo, <laughs> looking, <laughs> and then if I don't find it, uh, and then they go into Orangus after that. But yeah. yeah. A couple of things, a couple of cool things to mention. The Fire Red Leaf Green tournament has started. Um, the first race has, oh, first two races. I thought, I thought there we was had one, one before. Today. Is the first one today or the second one today? First one was yesterday, last right. night, and second one was today, and uh, they were both bangers. So, be sure to check this out for some races out for some great content. There's also bingo cards as well, so want to make it more fun as a viewer. Yeah, we've made bingo cards for these. So, uh... <laughs> Ascoa equals Easter. Thank you for letting me know, Headlock. Um, yeah, as so well. This is, just, this is just round one, so there'll be more yeah. rounds to follow. There'll be more rounds, and the draws for those rounds uh, will be on the PSR channel. Um, yes. I was told days, I don't remember the days, <laughs> but they will be happening on here. So if you want to, if you want to see the draws live, uh, and if you want to like get notified about all the run all the races and such and, and yes. join in the fun you can just join the the fire red leaf green racing discord should be in like the important links panel in uh in the various discords many of those most of the discords should have it i imagine definitely the gen one to three discord has it I'll link there uh and even better than that there you go there's a link <laughs> oh there we go so there is that. Um, there is also. I don't think it's been, has it been pointed to the Discord yet. I don't think it has been, has it? But either way, um, PSR Community Day is returning and will be held on the twenty third and twenty fourth of April. So it's technically not a Community Day anymore; it's Community Days. But either way, a weekend. Yeah. Community weekend, yes. So I gotta plan something for that. <laughs> don't have yeah. anything yet. People who are like people who are here, you get to have the I'll uh, get the inside knowledge about that. Should be announced either later today or tomorrow. We'll see. And thank you as well, Hulk, for heading on. This was like how like so I guess a bit of background knowledge. Uh Hulk asked me uh like how long it'll be. As long as it's not, not over two and a half hours, it should be fine. I was like, yeah, it's not normally over two and a half hours. And then <laughs> everyone decided to get world records. So <laughs> But <laughs> big podcast, big, big podcast indeed. Hasn't been this long. I feel like since the first few ones. Yeah, finally. But it's been cool. It's been cool having like you and Hulk talk about your various runs. My pleasure. But now is it time for the leaderboard roundup where I've died already at the bottom. We got to go back to the top for that. <laughs> so, does any? Any particular runs that like pop out, feel free to shout them out. I'll start off with like, the first one, 30th place for uh, Axons, or Axions, uh, with Red Anything Glitchless, 
uh, 148.44. Um, it would have been simple with 11th, with a 205.10 in a percent which was classic. Um, um, Notice Martin here, yeah. scores easy doing red glitchless as well. Uh, oh, snap yeah. Flare. Oh, yeah. So, uh, nice to see them uh, dive into something completely different. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair play. Fair play to Martin. Uh, Got seventh for Revenir in. Any percent glitchless Japanese Ruby Sapphire on console, uh, two hours and three seconds. Very close to that sub two. two. Go for that sub two. I had I, for a second. I thought, wait, almost sub two, and then I remember that no, it's uh, like that Sapphire is well, well, it's not well under sub two, but it's sub two already, isn't it? Yeah. I had I had five fifty seven. Yeah. It's been yeah. That's. 157 for a while by Shiru. Yeah. Uh, and then it was good before that as well, actually, right? I think. So yeah, it has been like a very long time. Yeah. Um, oh, Katniss. Katniss in 21st for 205.56 in Fire Red Leaf Green, any percent. Time, yeah. That for the. Is Katniss. Yeah, Katniss is in the tournament, I think. Yes. That's yes. Correct. 205 is only good enough for 21st. There's so many Fire Leaf Green Runners. Yeah. <laughs> have good times. Good time, though. Congrats. Yeah. And then also, to be fair, like, tw like 21st for Katniss, 22nd for Kid Rocker with a 20605. And then 23rd yeah. for G Shark with a 20624. I watched Kid Rocker's champ, and it was very interesting. He had 1x special, and you only yeah. had at least two or you need at least two normally so there's a way to beat it with one but it's uh it's, it's kind of weird <laughs> japanese sapphire is way faster with a 152 apparently yeah. wow yeah uh and speaking of ananan though and then second on the emulator boards with a 20158 x accuracy is apparently dog item uh, makes you miss moves that's a take. <laughs> that is a take. Uh, Kadir with the uh, eighth place on name list as well with a 20624. And then Koromin in 13th with a 20946. Uh, Vincenzo in 15th nice with a 23758. I to true dubs. Oh, Tucker? Could have been like a 235. Oh, took yeah. fourth in platinum. How was that? Really? My, that was my um, D Rust plat PB. It started off pretty badly. It was like a one thirteen lucky egg, but the rest was decent. Um, I actually missed out on buffing Minnow by one second. Ooh. Or uh, tying Minnow by one second, but Minnow is not on the SRC boards anymore because he's kind of detoxing from everything. I heard Minho came back. Yeah, he came back, but now he's gone again. Oh, he's gone again? Alright, fair enough. Yeah, my comment yeah. is uh, kind of a call-out, but kind of sad. I was, I was also going to ask what's that <laughs> comment, but... <laughs> uh, Proud's with the emulator world record, though. Apparently yeah, that's two... a one-second PB from nice. his previous. 30%, yeah. I'll take her again with the... Holograph. Okay, with the run that we mentioned earlier. Uh, Jimmy in third, though, with a... Yeah, a Jimmy here. Uh, 203.34. Mm -hmm. He's um he's using a new route for any percent minips. Oh. So it's nice to see a new route get good times here. Um, He's still going for a PB. Um, the run was... Had a pretty scuffed E4, so... I'm, I'm interested to see where he takes it. I like the new route. I like the minips, how they look. What is the new route? Um, yeah, it's basically just new minips. It's oh. just generally faster because the old route was like made five years ago or something. Is that yeah. the the one fifty nine twenty nine? Yeah. Yeah. Tucker in nine. Again. <laughs> yeah. 
Very I busy month for you. Yeah, I actually PB'd again, but it's not verified yet. It's a 314, 19. Oh, where would that yeah. put you? Um, seventh as a number on the leaderboard, but it's actually eighth because of Minnow. Okay. Yeah. Having fun playing it. Um, not a great PB, but it was, it was fine. I can do better. I need better fights. That's it. Yeah. Also not hit Lin. I hate Lin. Let's go. Affected Ash is in 11th with a 318.29. Yeah, uh, he picked up the 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 game this month and uh, it's got a very solid time already. Oh, he's actually PB'd again too. Oh. 317 of his own. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that's that then. Is, is Affected Ash's you're like Gen 1 runner? Um, Gen started with Gen 4, right, uh, yeah. did some Emerald, and now he's doing Gen 5. Okay, so I just got that completely wrong. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Dexys got what we mentioned earlier. Uh, fourth Gen with a 353.35 in the XY. In first of all, at the time, just with threes and fives. Um, I believe like Josh was on a better run earlier that ended up. Uh, Missing, oh, what was it? He had some really bad luck on the champion fight, basically, which is a shame. But still, got managed to get a PB the next day or something. So that's good to see at least. Uh, Ekman with the any percent Omega Ruby English uh, time seventh with a three oh four forty three. Missed rock tomb, rock tomb, rock throw. No, it won't be rock, rock tomb. That's ninety five percent in uh, X Y. In the Aurorus. Thank you again, Head Bob. And Head Bob with the uh, Alpha Sapphire 30606. Was that from. Actually, as well with Ekman's. That would probably be from the Aurorus Community Blitz. BB. That they did, I believe. Oh, it's been almost a month since then. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm flying by. Uh, I think we talked about it being the following day after the podcast. Last yeah. Time. Yeah, it would have been. Uh, oh, Ekman's was. Oh, Ekman. Oh, yeah, because that's actually this, the run day on the 5th. That would have been the day of the podcast. So fair enough. That was just separate. Um, Etchy's run's missing there because that hasn't been verified, I guess. Um, truly, with the four ten thirty three in sword, any percent. Um, I don't know if truly still going for sword. I think he is. I think he said he was de-resting something else. I'm not sure oh. what it is. Yeah, fair enough. To be fair, truly could I do think like truly could get. Uh, it could beat Hoom's time, like the four hundred eight forty one. Yeah, the gap's not too big. Yeah, it's just it can be a pain to ruin. I I've been running it. I've come back to ruin that category for over a month, and I was I I haven't. I think I only got past the fourth gym once. Apparently, <laughs> truly loves Girder. I don't think he actually loves Girder. Uh, something about that. Uh, yeah, that is very much a lie. <laughs> no one loves Gerda. No one can love Gerda. It just gets in the way on Route 8. With this giant hitbox because of this oh. <laughs> thing that he's holding or something like that. Yeah, that's obnoxious. Yeah. Uh, a Pure Joe uh, with the any percent uh, sword 1.2 uh, plus with the 41029. And also any percent with the LC uh, third place with a 40302. Um, percent glitchless, shining pearl, uh, English no turbo. Uh, got uh, Josh with the three twenty one at fifty. Uh, Caro with the uh, shining pearl in Japanese second place with a three thirty five fifty six. And then you uh, you with the fourth place with a three forty five thirty three. And then also the world record for Japanese turbo. With a 335 flat. 
So it's still short of Ringo's time. In those Is it really games. world record? Do we really know? Uh... If you combine turbo and no turbo, it is not because Ringo up there with the 327. Okay. Uh, didn't only drop the 321. Uh, Josh uh, also has the world record in English, uh, Brilliant Diamond. Oh, in, uh, in English was Brilliant Diamond. Uh, head Bob. That was, uh, was May, that was last month, I believe. Or last month's podcast, so Feb, <laughs> February. But yeah, no, he came back and and dipped again, which is fair play. Uh, no square as well with the ninth place, 16 at 10, and I believe uh, has a PB sense as well, like a sub 16. And it's just one of those things, uh, if the run hasn't been verified, it doesn't get picked up. Which is why, as well, for the uh, RCS runs, uh, both Hulk's current PB and Shady's are not on there. Uh, Vic's, I don't believe, is on there. I think Vic also has a sub 4 now. If my memory serves me correctly. Uh, oh, uh, oh, wait, oh it's Vic. Also has a sub 4. As, yes, so. that is also true. Um, yeah, many runs. <laughs> Legends Arceus mods are busy. Yeah, I mean mods in like I because like all the Switch mods are kind of the same across all the games as well. That's true. So it just it just happens like new game comes out busy. <laughs> uh, does have Caro's there though with the three fifty five fifty that was mentioned earlier. Uh, Tarasi with the 358.22. Uh, Hulk with the 359.12 as well. Um, and then Tippy with the catch em all um, no turbo world record, a 945.54. Uh, it's the only now. one that's on there, but you know. Getting a sub 10, fair play. <laughs> well done. Like, yeah, like, I don't. I think anyone thought sub 10 would be possible at least this quickly. But yeah, she did a really good uh, job. So fair play. Oh, that's the main category now, is it? It is a main, yeah. It's nice. on the I... main boards. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, there's, um, there should be a few changes maybe within the, over the next couple of months for just switch runs in general, I think. Uh, with more than just any percent being on the main boards. Uh, do, do, do. Mentioned win market earlier. Uh, Damon in third place for uh, Gale of Darkness, a 426.59. Getting closer to the world record. So, hopefully, Damon can keep uh, or is keep it off. He's planning to keep going with this. I don't know if he is or not. SBD Wolf. Uh, for Explosive Sky, any percent win the mail English DS slash 3DS, uh, 51102. And then Eponymous with the no win the mail version of that category, a 53726. And a all special episodes world record from Eponymous as well, with a 30858. Uh, all the Rescue Team DX runs that were mentioned earlier. The uh, Ranger Records mentioned earlier. Uh, Josh with the Pokemon Dash All Cups regular. Uh, 5801 in fourth place. I think that's notable about this. This was part of a 13 hour Dash uh, stream. Oh, yeah. 13 hours of Pokemon I watched, Dash. I watched a bit of that. Mad Madden. He's a, he's a Madden. Um, Poker Clicker Tutorial Auto uh, Auto Clicker Codeless World Record by Shine Sprite 41 1 minute 36 seconds 0 0.035 uh, Frozen Flag on with the 2622 and Anto Champion Auto Clicker Codeless 
And then fourth fit you can with a 2659.52. Uh, world records for ca uh, co op uh, Kanto champion normal codeless two player from uh, Wubu and Suko, a 2624. And then from the same people for clickless codeless two player with a 10711.032. Uh, Ed Baldwin and Gabe Platinum. Iron as well with the Fire Early Freem Plus uh, all main pokes world records. I, I've in I'm particular kind of messing around with these. <laughs> uh, Butterfree is really good. Uh, it struggles with like champ and stuff because of flying type, but getting good psychic type moves are, is really good. And of course, this hack has the experience buff and all that good stuff. Gyarados is a monster, but starts off as a level 5 magic card, but has the slow level curve, and you have to swap train it for 12 levels. Go ahead. No, 13 levels, and then to use two candies to 20. <laughs> so it's it's very slow. And then Intimidate is also slow. Butterfree is definitely better than it sounds for Red, Blue, Yellow, Fire, Relief. Really Ranger somewhere will be very happy that someone said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, into the cat extensions, uh, custom starter Mew, K Heights was in second with a 153.35. Primal Pizza in second place from Bass on Pass with a uh, 211.45. It's a very cool run. Yeah, that's very close to the world record as well, 30 seconds. Yeah, looks like uh, if it weren't for IGT twice. Ooh. Yeah, he's like. Seconds off. Sixth uh, for Red Wes in Eat Misty, 26 24. And then 12th for K Hyped uh, with the 2837. A uh, couple of soft lot of the game runs. Uh, Dev in 16th with a 156.877. And then Milozaki with a 229. 72nd. There's, there's that many runs. Let's see how many ones there are. Uh, get to it. Very short category. 105. Nice. I wish DS had that many. Oh, poor DS. <laughs> um, Stochi with the any percent no ace uh, gold silver world record. 31.58 and then uh, also Ocean Bagel in 9th with Manipulous Crystal uh, 3.4502 9, 9, 9, 9 coins uh, is that just going to the the game corner to get that many coins actually I guess so. to be fair I, like, I wonder what the strategy behind that one is there was apparently a 20 minute difference between uh, Matt Smith's uh, second place time with 59.40 and Roush's uh, 39.51. That's something. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bougie? Uh, is awesome. the, what? If I can talk about this a little bit. Uh, actually, first, um, first how do you pronounce that? <laughs> bouncy. Bouncy. Like the word bouncy. Yeah. All right, okay. Thank you. And out. Yeah, so if I could talk about this a little bit. Um, yeah. DP any percent minuteless sort of had like a weird like revival during the month of March just between these two players. Um, <laughs> it So it started with, uh, I think, Balancey getting the record from Lime uh, with a five second cut on world record. And then Awo came back in and cut record by 15 seconds. But he actually didn't get like a PB because his PB it was like an unver unverifiable um, run from a race that he didn't start recording, which was oh. like a low three, a 103. <laughs> so that's pretty funny there and unfortunate, but at least he did have record. Um, yeah. And then Bouncy came back with a 102.32, which is still not his PB yet here. <laughs> and then Owo also pb again a real pb this time a 102 48 like <laughs> these guys just kept trading back and forth and then finally bouncy ended up with the first 101 in nice. this category it's very nice 
very nice battle there. It's very fun to see. It's always cool when it's like a battle happening. Yeah, the run is just you really hope to get a good type hidden power to beat Rourke without evolving your Chimchar. Yeah, it's okay. not very fun. <laughs> but these guys kept getting good hidden powers. And then just that. The Juan Lee Keck. Uh, Heart, Gold Soul, Silver, Calgary Ascensions. Manipulus Glitchless, Sparkle Lantern, yes. Force, um, 3.6.23. So Sparkle, once again, comes back to HGSS, plays it for quite a while, and then gets a PB. Um, this is good enough for fourth, and his like live split was like dysfunctional for the whole run <laughs> so he didn't know what pace he was on until the end nice. his submission was four <laughs> seconds slower than what it actually was <laughs> and i think that actually costed a position no okay well no he was still he would still be two sec seconds faster than worcester's run but yeah good run yeah. and then... um Sorry. yeah that's right here uh yeah. manipulus any percent we had a Grinding Rubentis all of like February and early March. Um, the record before was 215.59 by Jimmy. And uh, Rubentis's run was like not close to record pace until um, until a carp, which then he did some new strats using poison to manipulate your HP to get like flail for an entire section so that saved him a lot of time and at the end he was able to use attract strats because he had a female magikarp and attract absolutely went in on both blue and red i think the final statistic that we gathered was attract worked 18 out of 24 times all right 75 <laughs> percent <laughs> yeah so this run absolutely was content and it's a big world record. Big time save using a tract. So, yeah, Definitely. no dust either. Just over 1% to happen, apparently. Yeah, that's quite a few coin flips to win. And then Bouncy with the 218.19. Yeah, Bouncy wanted a sub 220 and he got the sub 220. That he was looking for. Now they're both doing uh, any percent glitchless. Try to get better PBs. Good look then. Mm hmm. Alt main pokes for it. Worst with a 408 31. All right. Yeah, this run, um, it was like the first run that he beat Faulkner with. He like grinded for a couple of weeks and, um, he ended up forgetting to nickname the Centret, and he never <laughs> it. And he's just said, screw it, this is the run. I don't care. <laughs> this is what I'm happy with. So, yeah. Uh, Yoshida, uh, Yoshida Shu uh, with the Manipolis for Black White uh, in Japanese. A uh, 345.01 in second place. I think that and means masculine route. That's his comment. Masculine is a cool alt main for black white oh. manipulus okay wow. yeah the adaptability one that's good ability mm -hmm. uh head bob spent a lot of time with alt mains in xy uh greninja was record All the i mean <laughs> i assume head bob is like the only runner for this but still world records in greninja sylveon chestnut and delphox I didn't even know that alt means were like very viable in, in XY. Um, Shows to help for that. <laughs> I don't. I mean, viable might be a very loose term here. I don't actually remember what. The... Definitely slow. Although Delphox looks good. Better than the others. <laughs> oh, it wasn't for Greninja. Greninja was race. Okay, that's cool. Actually, also helpful. What's it? Was well, okay. It's definitely in this to four. It's, it's like a 340, right? Like 340 something, right, Hebop? The uh, X 
Y world record. Oh. <laughs> Pokey and me. And it, it all makes sense now. Uh, 341, right. Yeah, Pokey and me gives you boosted EXP. I'm surprised. Like, Forest Dome for Delph Box, that actually seems like a solid time. Oh, like a better time than I'd expect. Or maybe I'm just completely wrong about Del Fox. But like, I don't think Del. I imagine Del Fox wouldn't be that great of a Pokemon. And again, Chestnut, the Grass type having the worst Grass type track record is really bad in speedruns. Worse than Sylveon, even. <laughs> well, in his notes, he says it was unrouted, so. Oh, okay. I uh, still have some yeah. faith. I can imagine it's not great. It can click. It can claw about those fourteen minutes to beat Greninja. I'm sorry, I, I'm throwing strays at Chestnut. I really shouldn't. I apologize. <laughs> Solo diploma by Woo Woo. In second place, a sixteen twenty eight thirty. Even if it's from the looks of it, seven hours approximately behind Edicus. Still fair play for doing a solo diploma. And also being apparently first Pokemon speedrun aside from Pokeclicker. Just went straight into the deep end. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh Soul Shield Kagri extensions. Um more trade on main world records for Morgrim. Uh but Blossom, Butterfree, uh Third actually place for Larry and Demiatan. I believe it's the fastest one currently. I believe. Um, and there's also Jolteon and Vaporeon. Uh, world records there. Uh, Tower of Two Fists, Japanese, don't get a Shifu world record. Uh, Poke Hoshian with a 114.25. That's exactly the same time as mine. Wow. English. Nice. Uh, and then a uh, a Pia Joe with a one eighteen forty six. <coughs> Pardon me. I also didn't realize it's there's like seven runs. There might actually well more, maybe even more than seven runs for don't get a shifu. Couple of new runs though. Uh, Spicy C with oh might be new runs. Might be wrong with that. Uh, it's a smaller leaderboard than get a shifu if I recall correctly. Yeah, it, it is. But yeah, still I I thought like when I last probably looked there was. Four runes, or like four runes. Five, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, it's cool to see that grow a bit as well. Uh, but yeah, Spider C with a 117.49, and then Benji Reese with a 119.11. And then second for Spider C for Get to Calyrex with a 118.55. Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl category extensions. Uh, Alt Root Scy uh, Root Scyther, uh Zambi with the world record there with a 33043. Ult Main Mew, uh Yoshida Shu with a 34534. Uh Ult Main Cricketune uh Cricketune. Um no uh, uh, Cricketune. Yeah, whatever. That Pokemon. Uh fourth gen with a 55416. Um 80% no out of bounds English world records for Inoino you know, you know, uh, with a 4046 and then on Japanese a 4453. Glitched all badges for Yoshida 2 world records 5859 and then glitched all badges Japanese uh, 5924 for Yoshida as well. Uh, reverse badge order Yoshida with a 11151 and then crash percent. Uh, I, or maybe I will record, I don't know. But either way, um, you should shoot with a 35 second room there. Then Legends Arceus category extensions, all lords, uh, for all lords, Jim Freak with, oh, oh, all name, New Amber, uh, with a 30710. Um, that's a bit annoying with the lead, but it doesn't update names. Um, and then Beat Cleaver, our band with a 59.39, and then in second place, then in third, Deserate with a 
46. Or oh, 1 hour 46 second. And then the Stadium Category Extensions Minigame Champion Stadium 2. Very hard. 9 tokens. Ball Kush with a 444.867. Then finally, Trading Card Game Category Extensions. Any percent hard mode. Uh, second place for the Jaffa Man 5 with a 104.48. That is it. Yeah. <laughs> Took a while to get here. Oh. So. I, just, I don't know. <laughs> uh, my brain's a bit tired. <laughs> Understandable. Oh, uh, yeah. But, uh, I don't think uh, that was everything. Uh, any last things to mention? Oh, um, hopefully uh, April is less active. <laughs> less active in terms of for us to say things, but hopefully more active for some cool world records. <laughs> um, but in that case, though, the next podcast will be on May 7th. Which is five weeks away, I think that is. So, that'll be cool. Uh, go follow, uh, go follow Hal, and it didn't put a space between the thing for Tucker. Oof, I messed up with the command. So in that case, uh, let me press Hal separately. That one's Hal. Tucker's is separate, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming on though. Thank you no for the problem. Hulk. Thanks, was Tucker. a very fun, very fun time. Thank you as well to Hulk for coming on. Hulk had to leave, but uh, yeah, really appreciate you guys. Uh, really, Thank really you, good, uh, good knowledge sharing. Uh, follow Iron, follow Etiquette, and wish him, uh, wish him all to get better. Then outside of that. Oh, and then, yeah, I guess it's just another quick reminder. The podcast, oh, not podcast, the Community Day, 23rd, 24th of this month. Hopefully, you'll be able to make uh, make some time to stream. Or oh, if not, check out other people's streams. Mm. There may also be something happening on here. Maybe. Yeah, have a good rest of day evening, wherever you are. Take care. Bye. See you.